Hey guys. So surprise, surprise. I didn't really plan a, um, a live to air today. I wasn't going to do one and then I was going to do one. I got so busy because I did something else today. This is what I did. I went to Banco Santa Cruz. I've been asking. First of all, look at this guy. Hola, Hero's doing well. Hero. <laughs> He's like, yeah, I'll wait. <laughs> all right, so a lot of you guys have been contacting me about banks, how you open a bank account here. And I do have a service where I will give you the information that you need. And uh, with and, and I bank with Santa Cruz. It's my favorite. Uh, there's some pros and cons about every bank here. Um, and I'll, I'll get to that in a minute. And also, I don't want to take up too much time on the live to air right now as it's a little noisy in the background and everything like that. But I do want to explain to you guys about the bank and how you can open an account here. And if you want more information on opening up an account and getting mortgages, opening up an account, so many of you guys want to invest. So many of you guys want to know if there's GICs here and there are GICs here, guaranteed investment certificates. So many of you have so many questions. So. Um, one question that keeps coming up from y'all is, is it possible to get a mortgage in the Dominican Republic? Yes, it is. Is it possible? I found out today, and I was quite surprised. And there's also something that I really thought was interesting, a credit card. Now, in Canada, I didn't have any credit cards. Um, I'm not really a person who's a big spender per se, like always spending on big ticket items to buy like a roof or something like, so there was no need for a credit card really. Um, here, there's no need for a credit card. I didn't even know that they existed until today. And I was like, what, there's credit cards? And the gentleman, Francisco, he said to me, yes. Now, a lot of you guys already know that I bank uh, with Santa Cruz for the last couple of years and I've sent a lot of you to Orlando and Sosua and Albate. But now since I moved here to Cabarete, um, hold on, I'm just, there's this beautiful tree outside my house I'm going to show you guys in a second, okay? It's a tamarind tree, real tamarind. I'm going to let him down because he's just crying now to get down. So, um, Okay, so there's there's so many ways to get like credit here. So today when I was speaking to Francisco, I said to him, you know, I really want to build my credit in this country. And he's like, it's so easy to build your credit, just get a credit card. And I was like, hmm, how do I get a credit card here? I didn't know they exist. And he said, okay, this is how you're going to get a free book. Look at this. I love it. It says Santa Cruz on it, Banco Santa Cruz. <laughs> and um, he knew that I was taking notes for you guys. So in any case, in Sosua, I've been telling you guys for the last couple of years to, to look for a woman in Santa Cruz, Banco Santa Cruz, by the name of Orlanda. Now, Orlanda helped me get my bank account up and running, and she was such great help that it's my pleasure to send people her way. Well, the other day, I went to the doctor. I was feeling a little bit dizzy and everything, so I went to the doctor just to see what it could be, my iron, my vitamin B12, whatever. The Banco, um, Banco Santa Cruz in Cabarete. I was like, oh, I didn't even know there was a Santa Cruz in Cabarete. So yes, there is. There's a Banco Santa Cruz in Cabarete. You go to the bank, ask for Francisco, and he will tell him that I sent you, and he can help you get set up beautifully with, and this is in Cabarete. Now again, if you're in Albate, speak to Orlanda, tell her that I sent you. And when I went to her uh, about a month ago, she thanked me. She was like, Cerise, thank you so much for sending people my way. You know, a lot of people are coming and a lot of people are getting important information and getting started up with bank accounts and everything of that nature. And that's positive, you guys, because it really tells me that you guys are serious about coming here as I was when I first came. And you're really serious about staying here. You're so serious about investing in this country and also investing in your life and saving money and making money. So, you know, when she told me that, I was like, okay, there truly is a need for more information, not just WhatsApp, because I get a lot of you guys contacting me via WhatsApp. And, um, hola. And um, so 
that's what's in. I made a bunch of notes here for you guys, just for your own information. A lot of you guys ask me what type of information do you need when you want to open up a bank account in the Dominican Republic? Well, it depends. If you've been here for more than 30 days, uh, I think it's 90 days actually, you cannot open a bank account because your visa has expired and um, that you're visiting visa. Now, if you go hours and then you come back here, then your passport's renewed. And once your passport is renewed, you are able to actually open up whatever you want, okay? Like bank account and stuff like that. But if your passport, like your time here is expired, then you're pretty much stuck and you can't open a bank account no matter what. Okay, now, let's say that you've only been here. Let's say you haven't even come yet, <laughs> and you plan on coming and when you plan on coming you're only going to be here for a week but it is your preliminary type of feel to see you know feel your way through and get your bank account and get all your important stuff out of the way so it's not really like a vacation let's say okay because I know a lot of you guys come here and you're like coming here to look at places you're not even coming here for a vacation you're trying to find a place where you can move to and um you know, so you're all the way from the north coast to the south coast and you are really taking time. And I'm so impressed by that and I really do um, take my hat off to you guys. Then this information is not good for you. Again, what you'll have to do is fly to your country. If you are like me and you just don't have a desire to really go to your country right now because you're cool here and you're just chilling, um, then the other option again is to go to Haiti the Haiti Dominican border some of your mouths might be like oh Haiti no <laughs> and it's fine you just go to the border you get your um, Francisco told me today you just get your passport stamped and you come right back so you're good and with um, lime and ginger okay so my question to him and my other question to them today was is it possible to get a mortgage loan or a loan okay and hey <laughs> and um the first information he gave me was on cds they're called it's kind of like a guaranteed investment certificate for ten thousand you can buy a certificate for that low of a price a couple of hundred bucks but and then you can get it two ways okay now i'm just going to give you the preliminary information the stuff that i remember and the stuff that i kind of uh just processed today but i would encourage you to contact francisco at the cabinete branch yourself and get more information tell him what it is you want or feel free to message me with now if there's more information that you would like like if you want me to take you to the bank or anything i do provide that service and um i i feel that like if you need a translator you won't need a translator actually with orlando or with francesco neither francisco neither one of them will you need a translator both of them speak very good english but if your airbnb or your apartment that i helped you rent and take you to the bank then i do provide that service but a lot of you are looking to cut your costs. So this is what this video is about. <laughs> you know I'm a penny pincher. I'm not just trying to take your penny. So CD. It is a certific certificate of deposit. Again, there's two things you can do with them. You can take one and get a savings account. And then you can get your interest every month. Or you can decide to compound it. And take the interest every month and add it to the rate of more money because you invested more money and that means you'll get more of a rate and if you continue to do that then obviously you will build up your your income substantially now he suggested to me because i like that one i said to him i said oh, i really like that one I, I think i'll get that one because why take out the interest every month when i can compound it and he's like yes but a lot of people what they'll do is they'll get two cds and with the two cds the first one they will compound it and then the other one they will just live off the interest every month because of course it's such a it's a it's a, a good standard of living here but you don't need as much money right so um living off of the uh interest is quite possible depending on how much you invest it into your cd so for instance if you invested 200 bucks ten thousand pesos then 
clearly your interest every month is not going to be much. It might be a couple of bucks. You can't really live off that. So I would say if that's the amount that you are going to invest, like the lowest possible, then make it a compound um, account. Like make it a compound CD because taking out the interest every month may just pay for like a drink somewhere, a coffee in the morning. <laughs> I don't know, right? Because I don't know what the rate is or anything of that nature. But I would say that if you are going to invest a little bit more and like a lot more, not a little bit, but a lot more, then put it into savings because it's a possibility that you can live off the interest every month, have your money sit there, your principal amount, and then just live off the money every month. Like my rent here is 300 bucks a month and um, my, my, I don't know, I don't really have any bills, to be honest with you. I have my rent, I have my cell phone, I have my electricity. So let me go through that. My electricity last month was 600 pesos, which is 12 bucks. My rent is 300 bucks. And um, my cell phone bill is like 100 pesos every three days if I decide to um, top it up. And I only top it up and stuff of that nature, and that's not every day. So I might top up my cell phone like once a week. So if you add that up four times a month, that's 400 pesos, which is eight bucks for my cellular phone data because I have uh, internet here in my house, what I'm using right now and um, it cost me 20 bucks a month. So I guess internet is, uh, two th is 1,400 pesos until 2250 or something of that nature, 23. Okay, so just to kind of keep it like that. Sorry about the portrait view today, guys. I'm using an old cell phone and it just wouldn't landscape. <laughs> so I'm still rolling with it. Um, so yes, like, you know, depending on the possibility that you can live off of the interest every month. Now, if you feel a little, you know, like apprehensive about investing a lot more and you just want to start with the 10,000 one, which is, which again is to at least do that. Just so you have something that you're investing in. Now, those are the CDs. Uh, there is another possibility with the CD that you can do. And this is the possibility that I liked because I told them I was going to compound my my CD. I wasn't going to live off the interest. And that's when he said, of course, you know, depending on how much you put in, you can have one for compound and have one for your interest every month. He said, also, the other one, which I really do like bringing it back to the credit card. I don't even know what I would buy on credit here, but it's really just a way to build my credit here. And I know a lot of you guys want to do that as well. So he said, invest 40,000 pesos which is 5, 10, 15, 20, American, give or take a little bit. And then you will give you your credit card, it's in your name and everything, and you use that credit card to make your big purchases here, especially those of you who are coming here and you just bought your new place or you're planning on buying something brand new, um, like an empty apartment, and you wanna go furniture shopping. Yes, you can definitely do that with this credit card. I do have a little bit of credit here because I bought that motorcycle a couple of months ago and um, I paid it off very quickly, but I was told today that that's not good enough to like say I have good credit. I need something more substantial, which is obvious because the motorcycle was a thousand pesos, was a thousand dollars American, right? 1,200. So clearly it's not going to give me a lot of credit. It just proves that I can pay something off um, without forfeiting on it type of thing. Okay, so he said to me, 40,000 pesos, 800 American dollars will get me a credit card and I can use that to purchase anything that I need to purchase and it will show that I am very good at um, paying off the, the, the interest or the principal amount and it will show that I am reliable enough to be able to eventually get a loan here for a mortgage type of top up. Now there's so much more information that he did give me and I'm really excited to share it with you guys but um, now your certificate of deposit. You can get it for 30 days, you can get it for a year, you can get it for three years. So there's, you can walk your money in. Pretty good deal for those of you who are coming here. And I don't want to forget this. Okay, hold on. Um, you guys know how I digress. Hold on one second. Uh, okay, let me just look at these notes. 
Um, okay. Yes, yes, yes. There is this one point right here. Americans, this is for Americans. Holy mackerel, you guys are locked into your country. No wonder a lot of you guys want to escape. Sorry, I don't mean to put down America. And I really don't need to, I really don't mean to put down the government or the way it works because who am I to say? But wow, you guys are really locked into your country. And he said to me today that can, Canada is not the same way. So I felt good when I heard this. Let me tell you what I heard. He said to me, when you Americans come here, and you guys, and he said it, he thinks it's like this all around the world. So you might even know. I said, oh my, <laughs> let me get into it first. I was so, I was like, oh my gosh, do Americans even know this? And he's like, yeah, Americans know this. But if you know this, I'm sorry to tell you this information and repeat it. But if you don't know it, then maybe you should know it before you come here. So let me give you the story he gave me. He said he had two clients. They were living here for 45 years. They went back and forth to America, uh, but they had properties in America that they just sold off. They had one apartment in the middle of a road in New York, and everything was being built around this, this apartment. And they offered to buy out this couple, because this couple owned the apartment, the couple that was coming here to the Dominican Republic. They owned this apartment and uh, that apartment, and then they offered them $1.5 million to buy it off them. The couple said, of course, because the couple is residing here. The couple's like, wow, that's like winning the lottery. This apartment they thought they would never ever want. They didn't even know how they're going to let go of it. And now all of a sudden, they are able to actually sell it for way more money than they ever thought was possible. Okay, of course, they settled. They said, yes, absolutely. After they decided to put their money into the bank here in the Dominican Republic. When they went to the gentleman that I spoke to today, Francisco, he said to them, the American government does affidavit to, set, to sign, and they don't, the bank does not report the people who want the, um, the loan and, or even put money in or anything of that nature. Um, they don't report them, but they just take their information for security purposes because the American government keeps tags on everybody when they're making money outside of the country or if there's like whatever they're doing, like any investments they're making, um, especially with financial institutions. So the financial institutions here are legally obligated to report about your income and what's going on in your bank account when America questions. He said that it's not all the time that they question. It's only for security purposes. But imagine you are that person that the government is like siphoning your money because they feel that you are not being, they feel that you are not being very uh, truthful about your income. Okay. He said there's a way to get out of that. You go to the Capitol and you sign your rights away of being an American. Some of you guys' jaws are dropped. You're like, why would I sign my rights away of being an American? Um, and I know that those of you, and you love the Dominican Republic, but you've merely vacationed here for probably no more than a month. And that's why you're asking that question, because you are not living here full time and you are still attached to America and you still feel it's your home. Well, I I appreciate it when I heard today that those people were there and they're like, oh no, they went to Santo Domingo. They're like, we've been here for 45 years. Why in the world would we want to go back to America? There's nothing there. We just sold our last apartment that we had there. There's nothing for us. This is our home. This is where we live. This is where we're going to stay. Like, we're retired. We lived here for 45 years. Imagine, they lived here for 45 years. That means that they were probably 20-something when they came. Maybe even older. So they could have been in there like, 80s for all we know. I didn't ask them how old they were. I should have. I should have made this a story time. But um, in any case, they were like, no, we're not. I love Canada to pieces. But there's my family, and I know my family can come visit me here. I gave up everything in Canada. Uh, my apartment, condo downtown Toronto, everything. I, I let it go. And I have um, I have no reservations about it, and I don't I respect those people who said that they were 
they were willing to sign away their um, obligation to America. And then I asked him, I was like, so what happens when they want to go back to America? Are they allowed to? And he said, well, they're residents. When they want to go to America, they go. They go and they visit and it's fine. And, you know, they come back. And I was like, okay, well, that's very interesting. So um, it was very reassuring as well, just because when I heard that the government is all down people's backs like that, you know, I just felt it was a little unnecessary because imagine they, even if they were 35 when they left um, America, they worked hard and they paid their taxes during the time that they lived in America. So why is America, you know, all down their backs, breathing down their I hope you don't start because it's a pretty classy deal that you don't do it. Now again, I'm not putting down America at all, but I was, and America speaks about that freedom constantly. Um, I love Americans, all you Americans that come here, and I have so many American clients, a lot of you guys that are watching are American, and so, you know, I, I feel for you now, even more now that I have, you guys are um, in modern day slavery, because for you guys to have to report, and it's, how fair is that? It's not only a ball and chain, but it's almost like, you know, the mother or the dad has grounded you. Oh my gosh, where are you going? Keeping tabs on you? This is your life. This is your mind. This is your body. You know, your soul. This is you coming to this country to work or even just to, to, to kind of live. But I guess they didn't have to rely on their pension. Okay, so if you have a pension coming in, you do have to report everything. If you are relying on American dollars to survive while you're here, I don't think it's possible to sign off and just disown them. I don't think it would be very logical either, right? Because you're living on your pension. But for those of you who have a great savings and you're making your own money online all around the world and you don't rely on American dollars only, and especially if you're here not making American dollars, am I correct? Yes, want anything to do with reporting yourself or your income to America. I'm not promoting any for you to go rogue. I'm not promoting for you to like start hiding things and being secretive about it at all because it's important. I mean, I still do my taxes in, in Canada. Um, even though I don't have any desire to go back to Canada right now at all, I'm still... Um, so you guys um, that are coming here and you're going to be retiring and it's a decision that you know you've made and you're not going to go back to your country and you don't rely on American dollars, then that is an option. Um, I think it's up to you. Now you might be a little afraid of that too because of the transfer, the dollar rate transfer and the possibility of the peso going down and then the American dollar going up and especially with the world being so unpredictable with everything that's on and all the rumors of the one world don't follow everything that I'm saying right now contact me and I can help direct you into the areas that you need to get directed into um, no matter what your interest is if it's a CD as a certificate of deposit or if it is a mortgage or if it is even just getting uh, a bank account opened right a loan, a credit card, any of those questions that you have, contact me and then I can lead you into the correct direction. So um, don't don't just go rogue thinking, oh yeah, great, I can sign everything off. I don't need to start laughing because I have so many clients that already do that. So many clients that are already like, I'm tired of it, the matrix and I wanna come here. And you know what, I, I wouldn't even call it the matrix. I would just call it a different type of school. And you, you're done with that. You're in a new university now. You know what I mean? You're in a higher level of learning now. I don't call it the matrix. Um, I will call it what I, what I mean, but I, I like to think about it as not getting out of something or trying to break out of something, but growing out of it naturally. Just like, hey, like you're, you're mindful of who you are and what you want to do for your future and where you want to reside and you're not like you know oh my gosh i need to break out of this because when you have that mentality let me tell you when you have that desperate mentality and you are still working for like 14 years more it's not going to really be uh, a good 14 years i met a dominican 
online. And uh, he wants to come back here to the Dominican Republic and invest in a house and live, like invest in building his house. He, his mom died, she left him a house, and right now he's 49. So he went when he was 19 years old, and now he is a foreman in a construction company, and he really wants to come back here, but 49? You guys know he's not going to be retiring for like in another few more years, 20 years, uh, a little under 20 years, right? That's almost like, wow, that's a whole other lifetime for some people. And um, I said to him, why can't you just invest right now, build up this house that your mom gave here? And he said, um, no, it's not possible because the house itself needs to be fixed and the house itself is not really an area that would, people would want to rent an Airbnb. So he has this... Um, mentality that he's actually going to come but he has no clue when right and he just can't wait to break out like plan your life a lot differently don't be like oh this matrix is driving me crazy no <laughs> just be like I'm here for now not forever and I'm gonna plan my way out as I so whenever you come here to the Dominican Republic invest in something or learn about something um, you know, learn the language slowly while you're at home. When you come here, learn the different areas. Don't just come to Sosu or Cabarete. I'm not one to talk because I've only lived in in Puerto Plata. Puerto Plata is the province, and the province itself has Sosu and Cabarete. And oh wait, by the way, guys, I can see that there's a lag here. Are you guys getting good reception from me? Just let me um, do the video again. Mm -hmm. I won't delete this one, but I'll do the video again with the same information, but I guess in a different. But um, so yeah, they, they, a lot of my clients are like, they can't wait to break out of the matrix. And I get that mentality. I really do. And it's very, very sad that um, a, a lot of people. Okay, thank you. Yes, in the US, <laughs> the reception is good here. Agreement. Can you, okay, hold on guys, because you guys are now asking some questions here, which I love, but I need to get my glasses, and I don't have bottoms on. I have my panties on, but I don't have pants on. It's hot here, so I'm just going to turn the camera around a little bit like this, and I'm going to go grab my glasses, and I'll be right back. Be patient with me. Okay, I'm back. Funny thing is, I never used to have to wear glasses, and now I do. And um, I'm 48, I think it's a normal time. And um, I bought some really nice glasses here. Look, nice little design right there. Very nice, in blue. <laughs> all right ah uh, big bro Dre. oh gosh this feels so good i can see big bro dre yeah i'm in the u.s and the reception is good here okay fred falls hey fred do you need a rental agreement can you hook me up cerise a rental agreement um what do you mean by okay here you are again i'll be there next month i want to establish a bank account at santo uh banco Sanchez. Oh, Santa Cruz, it's called, but I'm not ready to relocate yet. What do you need? Okay, so you don't really need a lot to open up a bank account. Again, if you're only coming on vacation, that's fabulous. If you're here from like one to 90 days, you can get a lot done. You can even drive with your license from your country here, but after that 90 day mark, you are then. Uh, your visa is ended completely and you can't even open a bank account or drive with your license. People do drive with their license, of course. They just show their passport when the police pull them over and that's very common. But you cannot do anything official, like open up um, 
a bank account. The information you do need is you will need your passport. You will need a letter from your bank, like a reference letter from your bank in your country. And you will also need three months of information so they know exactly where this money is coming from and um, like to open your bank and they just want to see that you're legit and that you have no issues in your country and then you also need two reference letters from Dominicans here Dominicans that you know of now I was like what is this information that the Dominican has to give because when I opened up my bank account there was only one person and he signed for me and gave his cedula which is kind of like a social insurance number or a birth certificate number. That's what it's like, a birth certificate number. And he gave his birth certificate number for me and I thought that was kind of personal and I really appreciated the fact that he did that. But um, not all of you can find someone like that and not all of you know people here, right? And so to get two people to sign for you might be a little difficult. Um, and uh, so they said to me, no, the person doesn't have to show their cedular now. So things have changed, which is really positive. So that's what you need, Fred. Um, I would suggest that um, if you need to use PayPal, then um, go to Banco Popular. And I don't know what they need. The reason why I say Banco Popular, even though this video is not about Banco Popular, um, and I can't open an account with them right now either, <laughs> um, only because there's so much information that they ask, like business account information. And I was like, well, I, I, I do business, like I do business here. Like I have proof of, of everything. I can show you my bank records. I can show you everything. I can get reference letters. I know so many people here. I, the other day when I was buying a motorcycle, the other month when I was buying a motorcycle, I got a co-signer like this, Elsa, right? And it was not a problem at all. But they were like, no, um, you know, so. I just decided not to go with them and i not boycotting them, but I will deal with them when the time is right. If Again, the only reason why I even tried to open an account with them is because of my PayPal account. It's connected to, I wanted to connect it to my bank account here, but it, it just wasn't possible because Popular is the only bank account right now in 2020 that deals with PayPal. Now. A lot of you guys don't even deal with PayPal any longer. It's irrelevant to you. A lot of you guys deal with Cash App. A lot of you guys are dealing with um, Zelly. The other day, yesterday, I found about I found out about Zelly. Ola, Wayne, and Brandy. They told me about Zelly and also something to do with Chase. They sent me a link as well, which I'm gonna check out today. Hold on a second. Hero, Ben Aki, Ben Aki, come on. I'm going to be speaking Spanish to him as well. <laughs> he runs like a little mouse across the house. Uh, okay, okay. So there's different ways that you can do things and you can get an account, no problem. If you're not ready to move here, here yet, just line your ducks up in a row. And that's what I'm helping you to do. And I love doing it because when I came here, I did a lot of running around. I, I still do a lot of running around, you know. Um, I don't, it, it, I, there's little ins and outs and there's little network information that you know is underground that you might not know about and is not readily available to you and not only that you don't know to ask for it right so I stumble on a lot of information through my networking and that's what I want to share with you guys because I wasn't planning on staying here I was planning on coming here to edit my book that I was writing in Canada and then go home after two weeks or a month right so now it's totally different and I still need to finish that book which I'm going to do and that's why I'm in the house today after a long morning and early afternoon of work but I digress oh I love putting these glasses on you guys know those of you who you know have to squint when you're reading something all right let's look here um Okay, let's go back up. Alfredo Acosta, AKA DJ. Let's see, hi Cerise, it buffers a little, but it's nothing bad. Okay, thank you. Fred Paul, sorry. Sorry for what, Fred? Shay Star, missed the show, laugh out loud. There was no show today. 
Um, I didn't choose any guests or anything like that for today, but next week I'm going to have Mr. International, but he changed his channel name and I forget what the new channel is called, but I'll make sure I put all the information up um, probably tomorrow. Um, and Fred, when you come next month, let me know if you need any help, um, whether it's in Cabarete or Sosua, Albate, I can send you to the right people that you need. If you want me to go with you, I do have a service charge for that, but you're probably going to be good on your own because um, I'm sure you've been here before, right? Kevin Kelly, great live, Queen. Aw, thank you, Kevin. <laughs> uh, Fred Fells, like paycheck stubs. Three months. No, not paycheck stubs. From your bank. So what you do is you just contact your bank and you just tell your bank that, um, you know, you, you need a reference letter uh, for the bank here. And you know what I did, actually? All I did was just go on my online banking because I didn't have access. Put it this way, when I opened up my bank account, I didn't even know how to call my bank from here. Um, and now I do from Skype because it's a, if you guys download Skype, you can call your bank for free from your house and you can talk to your bank because it's a 1-800 number or 188 number or whatever it is, right? Toll free number. And you guys can call your bank. So I would say do that. But, um, what I went, I just went online and I copied all my information, screenshot it from my cell phone actually, not my computer, my cell phone, screenshot my information and blocked out my account number but left my name there and my, my transit number and everything like that and I sent them to her through email and she let me know she did everything and she's like this, this is good to go. And it was great. And, you know, it was three months of information on my banking. Now, for some of you guys, you may not have a lot of information on your banking because some of you guys are not getting email money transfers. A lot of you guys are only getting paid every two weeks from your bank and you don't use your debit card. Maybe there's not a lot of activity in three months in your bank. It, there might be only two transactions, but don't worry about that because what they're looking for is negligence. They're looking for something negative. They're not looking to see if you have like a thousand hundred dollars in your bank account. They're not trying to see anything like that. They're just trying to see if you did something negligent and they want to see that you have a good standing history with your bank back home. So don't worry if you don't have a lot of information to offer in three months. If you if you like, just send them six months worth if, you, if it makes you feel a little bit better. And let's see, uh, Jackson Jeter, JJ in the house. I love you, brother. Hi. Okay, David Rich, if we don't open an account, is it a bad idea to just bring a large sum of cash with us? Oh, David Rich, that's a really good question. And um, I always question people why they bring a large sum of cash. I think it is a form of fear or personal security. It's like a security blanket, right? Um, but in my opinion, I, I wouldn't want that much cash on me. Where would I hide it? And when you say a lot of cash, what you consider a lot of cash may be different than what I consider a lot of cash. And for me, a lot of cash is like a down payment for a house type of thing, just in case you want to come and invest in something or even like buy a car or whatever, if you're coming for a while. And I would suggest you to not do that leave your money in your bank in America and use your bank card while you're here. Get some type of special monthly um, discount or some type of monthly package from your bank in America until you know you're staying here full time, indefinitely, permanently. And then, you know, definitely open up a bank account because you're gonna want your money to make you money anyway, right? If you are here full time, you're going to want to make sure that you are getting interest on that money anyway. So if it is a large sum of money, I would suggest that you do invest in CDs and you're going to get that money back. It's like a guaranteed investment certificate. So if you if you feel comfortable, I know a lot of you guys, I have a lot of clients that come down here and they're like, Suri, I'm bringing you know, $10,000 with me and I'm only staying for a month. Is it okay? And you know, I think to myself, well, it depends on how much you spend money, right? You can go through that 10,000 quite easily, especially on vacation. But again, if you're living here and you're residing here and you think that you're gonna stick your money inside of your, you know, your cellar or underneath 
the ceramics in your apartment or in the garden in, in your house or whatever it it it's just gonna make you paranoid really it's gonna it's, it's like you're gonna have to baby your brain to not think about your money you know that song back in the day got my mind on my money and my money on my mind that's exactly um, what it is I want to show you guys something I'm so sorry to digress but just look at this bird he has so much character while he's gone there's this little bird he so he has so much character he looks in the mirror like because my windows are like mirrors and he talks to himself all right look I digress sorry let me um go on to the next question so in my opinion I don't think you should have a lot of money on hand at all times like that and why not have a, a, a bank account here but David, seriously, um, if you are bringing a large amount, don't tell anybody, not even your friends. I, I do have a story time that I'm going to be doing soon. Uh, for those of you who don't know what story time is, I do some stories. I just haven't been doing them because I've been so busy. But um, I have a story time where two buddies came down here together. And one guy had more money than the other. And the guy that didn't really have a lot of money, he was out with his girl. His girl was a working girl. And he was out with her and he ran out of money. And he said to the working girl, okay, um, just hold on here. I'm going to call my friend and he's going to bring us money. And she was like, oh, you got it like that, eh? And he said, yeah, don't worry about it. He's my good friend. He always has money. He brought down like blah, blah, blah amount of money with him. Well, that night... He got drunk, his friend did arrive, gave him some money, and that night he got drunk and he took the working girl back home with him to their Airbnb, to like the two men's Airbnb. Well, that woman and him started to chit chat and everything and he fell for her that night and he really, his heart really went out to her, he caught feelings for her. And he was only here on a week vacation. By the sixth day, okay, she already knew where that money was and she had that guy robbed in the middle of the night before they were going to the airport the next day. So you want to really be careful who you're talking to about your money, who you're with, and make sure who you're with is not a chatterbox at all. Please be careful with your money. Okay, let's see what we have here. Um, Fred, I'll send you a DM later today about some things I want to share with you, ideas. Sounds good, Fred. Give me a WhatsApp, a voice note, or text on voice note. Jackson Jeter, yeah, Popular wanted too much information. You know what? I hope someone from Popular, Banco Popular, hears this because a lot of expats are tired of Banco Popular for all of the extra information. But then, <laughs> people who can get the accounts there and it's just like, they don't mind because they have a lot of time on their hands and they roll with that information anyway. Um, I, I think it's a good thing too because you know that it's a secure bank and you know not everybody can get an account there so that's that's I think pretty positive as well sorry Banco Popular but I have that little hate fest on for you only for a little bit and then I realized that you are actually pretty cool because you are looking out for yourself and also for all your customers okay Alfredo Benaka not Benaki Benaki is gringo but I am a gringa, <laughs> and then aquí is proper Spanish, and um, the only people who I hear say ben acá here are um, like people who are not in business, and people who are in business, they say ben aquí, aquí is here, not acá. But I was watching a Mexican program the other day, and they were saying acá. I used to, when I was first here, I used to say Ben Aka, and I was corrected so many times from people on YouTube who study Spanish, and they were like, Cerise, it's Ben Aki, not Aka, and so I had to actually get myself out of the, uh, out of the misgrammar. And in English, I like to speak with words properly. I don't like to say, you know, Toronto or Toronto. I say Toronto. You know, when I was in Cuba one, one year, um, the, one of the people said to me, where are you from? And I said, Toronto. 
And he said, no, you're not. You're not from Toronto. You may be from the countryside or something in Canada, but you're just saying Toronto because everyone knows Toronto. And I said, no, no, I'm from downtown Toronto. I was born in St. Michael's Hospital. Like, I'm, down, I'm Torontonian. And he's like, well, how can you say Toronto and not Toronto? And I'm like, because I want to say how it is. Like, you know, so I like to speak as best as I can. So I'm not going to say Benaka. <laughs> and I don't want you guys to say Benaka. I'm a gringa. I will say it the way it was taught to me through my Spanish lessons. But thank you, Alfredo. <laughs> uh, Alfredo. Alfredo Acosta, a.k.a. DJ. Oh, DJ Buggenheim. Oh, DJ Buggenheim. I remember your name. You're not a gringo, are you? Okay, David Rush. Uh, no, just a few thousand, like 5,000. David, if you're bringing down 5,000, um, then yeah, bring down 5,000. But, you know, um, really don't put it in a safe. That's one thing a lot of you guys ask me for. Does the apartment have a safe? And I'm still trying to make sense of that one. Okay, because when I first came here, I had an Airbnb and I was throwing everything in my safe, my passport and everything. And then I realized that someone could just go into the apartment and pick the safe up and take it out. It wasn't a safe in the wall and it didn't make sense to me. So I was finding myself, you know, um, putting my belongings, like hiding it in, in very good places. I'm not going to say those spots right now, but um, in very good places. And it worked for me. And so that's what I did. Now I'm not so paranoid because I use my bank card for everything. And plus I have, um, you know, my, my bank here and everything like that. So I don't have that dilemma. But that was my first month here and I wasn't really into a security box. So if you're going to bring your 5000 down, take 1000 hide it somewhere like in a sock and take another 1000 and hide it in somewhere else. Like, you know, like just in different areas hide it in the fridge that's a common spot in the freezer but you know i mean there's so many places you can hide it there's a plumber that told me what he does and he uh, and i don't do this because i'm not about to take apart the sink every single time i want to go spend some money but what he does is he unscrews the bottom of the sink whether it's in the kitchen or in the bathroom and then he shoves the money in like a little plastic bag and that's it and then he closes it back up very few times a uh, thief is going to be trying to get into your pipes to get money. And even if he tries, I mean, what thief carries around a wrench, right? So think of those places where you can keep your money, please, David. $5,000 is a lot of money for a vacation, but $5,000 is not a lot of money to spend up on a vacation. You know what I mean? Because you can spend that money easily on rental cars, dinner, um, even if you decide to go to Santa Domingo or go on a shopping spree or something of that nature. Someone is honking a lot out there, but I don't think they're honking for me. Okay. Um, Alfredo, message retracted. Dream Warrior. Dream Warrior, there used to be a group in Toronto, the Dream Warriors. I think I said this before. They, they have a song called Ludi. You guys check out Ludi. Hey, hello. I'm good, how are you, Dream Warrior? Alfredo, you never tell anyone about your funds. That's right, Alfredo, never tell anyone about your funds, ever. Because, um, you know, it, people talk. People talk. People talk even if they don't know about your funds. But when you tell them about your funds, they just have a whole other thing to talk about. And, you know, they, they think, you know, there's just already a lot of money with the gringos and the gringas here. Well, gringos and gringas are foreigners, for those of you who don't know. Um, expats. And for those of you who don't know what expats are, um, it is an expatriate. And now Noche is barking. Noche! Noche! Come here, sweetheart! I don't know if she's trying to tell me something or not, but I'll, I'll wait. Um, and there was something else here I wanted to respond to, actually. Um, if you use PayPal, maybe you should open an account in America and see if that's transferable or accessible in DR at Banco Popular. 
you know what, Alfredo, DJ Buggenheart, I really wish I could, like, I can't even get Cash App because I'm not an American. And so many of you guys contact me and you're like, Cerise, what's your Cash App link? I just want to send you a couple of bucks. Thank you for helping me out. And many of you do that. And I'm always like, well, I don't have a Cash App. I have PayPal. <laughs> so you have that ancient app. And you guys are like, I don't have PayPal. And I get that. But um, if you guys know any way that I can get Cash App, then that would be great. Um, I'm going to be looking into Zelly. And I'm going to be looking into Chase. Chase, I heard that that's pretty good too. I don't know if I can get a, an American bank account as a Canadian. If I can, you guys let me know because I'll definitely get an American bank account. But if I have to report to them the way that you guys have to report to them with every single dollar that you're investing, then I'll just stay with my PayPal or my uh, Caribbean Express. <laughs> All right, Douglas Anderson, what's up, bro? Douglas says, at David Rich, you can enlarge denominations, but you just risk losing it all if you lose your wallet and a chica finds it. Um, Alfredo, Dominican born in NYC. That's why you say Benaka, because you're a Dominican. Okay, um, Alfredo, Aka is street. <laughs> yes. And our key is proper, yes. There's a time and a place and everything. It's good to know. Ah, oh, you're a sweetheart. Douglas Anderson, I've brought like one or two thousand in cash out one hundred a day or every other day. Okay. Yeah, you definitely need cash app, David. Yes, I do. And Douglas Anderson, um, how much do you spend a day? So you take a hundred you spend a hundred bucks a day when you're here, eh? So hmm, that's a a, that's a Canadian word, guys. So um, 100 bucks a day is fair if you are visiting or on vacation. But, um, and, I, and I used to go through money a lot when I was here as well in the beginning. Um, nowadays, I might spend, I don't know. Some days I don't spend any money at all because I'm in the house working. Today I was out and about and I bought myself uh, a purse. I bought myself a nice Michael Kors purse on discount, original, at a nice beautiful Tienda. So I put a couple of bucks there. But normally I don't. I'm not really a big spender. But if you guys are wondering like how much you could spend a day and just kind of get away with having a good time, I would say um, probably a hundred is fair if you're on vacation. A hundred is fair if you're having fun in all avenues. But if you're just going to the beach, you might spend a thousand pesos. Because if you're just going to the beach for like a meal and a few drinks, a thousand pesos is about 20 bucks. It's easy to just spend like about 20 bucks a day. Now, if you're not a drinker and you're just going to the beach with your own canister of tea or juice or whatever, and you, or you just get natural juice and you're not a person that eats in the streets and you rather cook at your Airbnb, then you're definitely going to um, save a lot of money doing pretty much nothing, right? Um, and, unless, of course, you're into, like, you know, the girls or whatever. Obviously, you're going to spend some money on a girlfriend or something of that nature. Maybe go to the movies every now and again. But that's not going to be an everyday thing. I think Noche was dreaming. Noche! Noche! I hear her going, <laughs> So yeah, I don't really think that you guys need a lot of money at all here, unless you're actually, you know, spending it crazy. Um, let me see, David, yes, I do need Cash App. David, oh, is there a limit to amount you're allowed to exchange at a time? That's a very good question. Um, oh, Alfredo answered you here, 9,999 is limit for no irs reporting oh thank you for this one alfredo i didn't know it um reporting at a bank account by an american ten thousand is reported all right so keep it at the nine 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 guys nine thousand nine hundred and ninety nine as you don't want your big brother breathing down your neck um douglas anderson has any veteran ever western union money to themselves is it worth it come to compared to atm no, 
it's not worth it um, because at the ATM, uh, unless you're trying to send yourself like, you know, $5,000 or, you know, a certain amount of money, like a higher amount of money. But if you are cool with taking your, like your, you know, whatever hit every day when you go to the bank machine, I would say do that. That's what I did. I would go to the bank machine, take out 15,000 pesos at a time, that's 300 bucks at a time and I would just save the money you know I don't like to have any money in my apartment at all times at all and um, so because I don't really live in a residential area and that really doesn't make a difference because residential areas also get busted into every now and again around the world I'm not talking about the Dominican Republic I'm just saying the false sense of security the gunman could fall asleep the gate could break or you know anywhere around the world again it's that whole you know, false sense of security with a little security box like this and you put all your belongings into it and it can be picked up and taken out of a hotel room even. You know what I'm saying? Um, and that's the first place people look in anyway. So, um, yeah. I, oh, oof. Hero is at the bottom of my feet, my little puppy. So, yeah, um, I don't know if I answered that question. Um, but, yes, I would say... ATM Douglas is pretty cool. For me, it's pretty cool. It gives you back money in pesos. You don't have to go and get your money exchanged. So even if you do come down here with American dollars, um, like you have to go and exchange it constantly at Caribbean Express or Western Union. Now, um, again, if you want it, forward yourself a lot of money, then yes, it's important to do it like through Western Union. But if you have a bank account here, you can send money to yourself through your bank account. And guys, that's one thing that I think I'm going to start doing with you who rent apartments from me and stuff of that nature. I'll just get you guys to send it to my bank account and um, like, and I'll give it to the landlord that way. Because it's going to be cheaper for you as well to send it through international bank transfer than it would with Western Union. The other day, I sent $800 to myself, okay, because um, I needed to pay my rent. Um, right now, I'm waiting for my bank card. I've been waiting s about, about six weeks, maybe, for my bank card. And uh, so it arrived in Canada, and my son sent it to me, fast-tracked it to me, sent me the tracking number and everything through Canada Post and I still have not received it. I'm really surprised by that actually. So I just been, um, you know, living on like um, sending myself money. And so the other day I had to pay my rent and I wanted to get a few things. So I sent myself $800 Canadian. It ended up being 500 and like 30 or something American. They exchanged it from Canadian into American to bring it here to the Dominican Republic and then I had to exchange it into pesos, which didn't cost anything to exchange it into pesos, but it was just more of a hassle, you know? So I'm so accustomed to, and it also cost me 40 bucks to send it. And that's like, doesn't make sense to me. I'd rather take money out of the bank machine here, take the $5 hit, that's what my bank charges, $5, and um, that's it. Now, some of you guys have really good deals really good packages with your bank and some of you guys it doesn't even take any money it doesn't they don't even charge you to take money out of your own bank account so ATM 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 all the way if you're coming down here with cash uh, large sums of cash um, and you plan on changing it over into pesos it's going to look like a lot more money so you don't want to be walking around the streets with all that money, which means you're going to have to keep the money in your Airbnb, your apartment, your villa, or whatever. And also, which means you're going to have to find a very mm, safe spot for your money. I'm the type of person that if my money is like, if it's a lot of money, because not here, but when I used to visit Cuba a lot and I stayed in the hotel, even then I didn't put my money inside of the safe. I would always hide my money somewhere else. And so, um, but there were times where like, you know, have a couple of drinks on the beach and you know, you just kind of started thinking, oh, I wonder if my, my room is safe. And I would go back just to check on my money. And I'm not, I don't want to be that type of person here. I, I don't want to have that on my conscience. That if, you know, all that money is taken or whatever. So I, I just, mm -mm, I don't, I would suggest that if you guys are bringing a lot of money, keep it in 
large bills, you know, like 5000 Okay, let's say what uh, David said, $5,000. Keep it in thousands. And, or, or have like a few of them, have two of it or three of it in thousands and have the rest of the money in hundreds or something like that. So the bundle isn't big and you can slip it somewhere very easily where no one's going to see it. You know, very, like, so easily. And I would say keep it safe that way. But again, if you don't need to and you have really good bank fees and you got it like that, then ATM all the way. Of course, talk to your bank before you come down here because the one thing that people do end up doing, they come down here, they put their card in the machine and their card, their card won't work because they didn't notify their bank before they came here to tell their bank that they will be traveling. And uh, that's really important because once you get here and you, and you crunch for dollars, or pesos rather, and you can't get it out of the bank, you gotta call your bank on the spot. And then of course, that's just all tedious. Like it's just, you know, it's something you don't need to do. So just contact your bank before you come here and give them a heads up on how long you'll be here. And even if you don't know how long you'll be here, because a lot of you guys are like, okay, I'm just gonna come for a week and play it by ear. And then you end up staying for three, four, five months. Um, you just wanna keep in touch with your bank. You know, speak to the bank and let them know that you're staying a little longer so the bank knows. And that way you don't have any concerns with your bank card. Now, my bank card I don't have right now because it expired March 2020 during the pandemic. My bank was nice enough to actually keep it rolling because the banks were obviously closed, so they didn't stop it. But they kept it rolling right up until, oh, like, I guess said eight weeks ago, two months maybe, more than two months, because I had to contact them and say, can you at least reinstate my new card, my old card, until I receive my new card? And they're like, oh, you didn't receive your new card yet? And I'm like, no, you guys canceled it, and I'm happy that you guys canceled it later, but I don't have my new card in my hand right now, and even my son doesn't have it in Canada right now in, in, his, in his mailbox. And they're like, oh, well, you're gonna get it in 11 days. So I was like, okay, cool. I waited and I waited. Didn't come. It was like about a month and then it came and now I've been waiting for it. I want to say six weeks and I know it's been longer. Um, so yeah, I mean, I've had to email money, not email tra money transfer, but Western Union myself money um, and not even myself i had to email money transfer the money to a client hey jessica she was so kind to do it for me like three times already and i had to email money transfer her the money she had to take the money and go to um western union and send the money to me so and then i had to go to western union it's just a a bunch of um you know unnecessary work so i'm really into the atm here um, I'm really into the banks here, especially if you're going to be here long term and especially if you have grown outside of your country, like you're growing within yourself outside of your country and you're ready to stay here permanently, then definitely get used to the ATM system and definitely get used to the pencils and definitely get used to, you know, just not having a lot of money on hand or stashed away. People kind of pick up on that. And it's not that people are going to rob you. And it's not that people are going to, you know, get you up in the street and hit you up and stuff like that. It's not even like that. It just, it, it kind of just makes you seem vulnerable, you know, like, but it, it's not a negative. <laughs> All right. Um, Alfredo, TMD does it to himself. Yes. And that's probably for large amounts um, for Western Union. Douglas Anderson, no, that's just how much I figure I need daily. Okay, thanks. Um, Alfredo, I guess it depends on your needs. Yes, Dream Warrior. The clarity is really good on this live. Thank you for letting me know. Douglas Anderson, I used, I used to ATM 350 every couple of days after the 1,000 that I bring finish. Ah, smart. Dream Warrior. Have good contacts in the Florida Plaza area for long-term rentals. Yes, I do. I definitely do. Oh, 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 roll the tape. Kaboom! Guess who stepped into the room? 
I love you, roll the tape. I want you on one of my live airs. Um, I was talking to Jackson Jeter. I want you on one of my live airs. Oh, but I don't know how to do bar, um, stream barn or stream yard or barn stream. I don't even know the name. But um, Jackson Jeter told me to talk to you about it. So you can WhatsApp me and give me the ropes. I would love to do that because I would love to do a live to air with you. Douglas Anderson, I got here a little late. What's the advantage, if any, of having a cash app card in DR? I don't know what a cash app card is. I don't know. Uh, cash app is an application that I know that I can't get. I can download the app into my cell phone, but I can't get much else going with it. So, And Roll the Tape says, at Douglas Anderson, they was giving you hell the other day in the chat. Stop with that. <laughs> they were trying. Douglas Anderson, what are you getting yourself into? Here you are, so sweet, telling me all about the quarantinis. Douglas, for those of you who don't know, Douglas Anderson was telling me that I should develop a drink called Quarantini during the quarantine. I have lots of people outside my door right now. Can you hear them? Um, so Douglas Anderson was saying, Cerise, for your upstairs restaurant, like upstairs, I have my, my patio, my, and I was gonna make a restaurant. And he's like, you should make a drink called Quarantini. And uh, I thought that was really sweet. But, uh, oh, I'm gonna digress for a minute. So that idea is not totally gone, the restaurant idea. I know I come up with a lot of ideas and I know I try a lot of things and I'm always putting my hands in every pile that I think I can create and everything. And so I said I was gonna create this beautiful restaurant, Arriba, upstairs, but trying to figure out what they're saying but I realize it's not something that I can do right now although I want to do it and I want to bring you guys to like my place I want to show you guys what it's like to be right here in the Dominican the Republic overlooking the playa the beach and have a meal you know cooked by Dominican and stuff like that at a low cost and just chill out and then go get a massage on the beach that's what I wanted to do but then I realized again it's a lot of work so today Joelle and I were at Mojitos, um, and I know that voice. That's why I keep stopping. So, in any case, um, we were just hanging out as friends. We're not together any longer. I'm single again. <laughs> I don't mind. As sola. And I don't mind. I love it. But he's a good friend. He's good people. He let me down, but I not the type of person to stay down and i'm not the type of person to throw the baby out with bath water unless the person you know wants to be thrown out so he helps me out a lot and so he him and i were talking today about business and um you know and he's young he's younger than me too right so we're not intimate any longer but he is so cool with me Hold on guys, I have to go look to see who's yelling outside. Hold on. I don't have any pants on. <laughs> I only have my pan panties on, so I'm gonna have to lift you guys up with me. But why not? Let's go, I'll check out and see what's happening. Let's go look off the balcony. I have this blue right here, so. Oh, they're just having their passionate Dominican chat. So let's hope the reception goes back good again. My gosh, we never know what this old cell phone that I'm using. Okay. All right. So, yes, I wanna, upstairs, I wanna have you guys come over and not necessarily a whole restaurant, not at all. I realize that it's just, it's not really my passion to um, have a restaurant. I had one before and it was a lot of work, but it is my passion to be a hostess. It like. I love hosting you guys, and we'll have like certain foods. 
most likely knowing me, I'll just do project reservation <laughs> and you guys let me know when you're coming. Tell me what you want. I'll get Joelle to cook it and um, you know, you guys can get yourself some drinks. Here's no Jay. Come say hi to everybody, my love. Oh, there she is. Oh, she's had a little bit of an attitude since I got here. Oh, oh. Mm -hmm. but she's happy. Oh, yes, I heard you dreaming. So, yeah, uh, that's what I'm going to be doing, guys. Okay, I digress. Let me answer your questions here. Hold on, no. Hold on, baby. Ah, roll the tape. Okay, Sarees, you always a positive lady. Aw, thank you. Oh, wait, I think I'm missing a couple of messages here. Douglas, man, you really get what's going on. Some don't read between the lines. Douglas, I'm too smart for them. After a while, they just give up. Douglas Anderson. Okay, sir, you always a positive. You know what, roll the tape. You're a positive person, too. The real boxing fan. The real boxing fan. You like boxing, eh? I come from a boxing family. My dad and my brother used to do boxing. My brother used to be a boxer. His name was Kid Cayenne back in the day in Canada. I used to do a little sparring myself in Cabbage Town Boxing Club in Toronto. And I used to have a pretty mean right hook and an uppercut. <laughs> so why are you called the real boxing fan? Um, I'm going to read your message now. Thank you, Cerise. Valuable advice. I am here in Thailand and I opened up a bank account and I use, sorry, and I use, hold on, no, hold on, baby. And I use a company called TransferWise to send money to me. Hey, Cerise, I left a question about Tori Elta. Ah, yes. Uh, what was it? You messaged me like two weeks ago. Douglas Anderson, nothing ventured, nothing gained. That's so true. Thank you for the support on that. And the real boxing fan, oh, thank you for the $5 contribution. You know what I've been doing with um, like any contributions? I keep a note of the contribu contributions, and um, it's money that I will put aside. And when like Christmas comes or whatever, um, Easter, stuff of that nature here, I will feed a family. So that's what I've been just doing. And for me, it makes me feel good. It's not like a charity drive or anything like that, but it's taking your dollars that you guys are contributing to me and it's pushing it forward instead of asking for donations on, you know, certain things. And I'm not knocking anyone that does ask for donations because I have my PayPal link <laughs> up there. <laughs> that PayPal link, it just gets me laughing. All right, Alfredo, I knew she couldn't contain herself. <laughs> I had to get up, right? I'm like, oh my gosh, what's that noise? <laughs> Jun Jun, 100, 100. Cerise, I love you, keep on, keep, oh sorry, keep moving on. Sometimes you have to go through to find that one good one. Oh my gosh, thank you. You know what? Guys, I think I'm do, gonna do a story time on what happened between Joelle and I. Um, it, I can't hate on the guy. I can't hate on anybody that is, you know, I, I don't know. I'm just a fiercely loyal woman. And even when I'm with one man, I won't look at another man. And um, not even look, out of guilt, I won't look because I'm satisfied, right? Why am I gonna look anywhere else? It's like, eat your meal, why are you gonna look at someone else's plate if you're full? And that's, that's my mentality. But um, yeah, he had someone before me that he wasn't with for a short while. And then they ended up reconnecting one, uh, one night. I don't know how it happened because he was with me all the time, but my intuition was on fire. And I said to him, like, are you talking to someone else? And he was like, no. And then um, I just, I put, I found out and um, and I don't know, this is not the time to talk about how I found out and everything. I still want to just answer your questions about everything else. But yeah, I found out and, you know, he couldn't admit it and he still hasn't admitted it. And I know for, tr for sure it was true. And so I don't need him to admit it if I know it's true. And I don't need him to commit to me either because I don't want a person that 
mm, cannot admit it. Even if he did admit it, I still wouldn't want to be with him because um, I want someone to marry me. I want to be equally yoked with someone in regards to when it comes to my heart and my future. But when it comes to other things, that guy has my back. Like he, I can't even, I have to forgive him for what he did because he is a tr he's a true friend. I, we're true friends now and I call him my friend and at times I know he probably thinks, is this woman a little like crazy? I mean, does she even care at all before? And I know he probably thinks that, but I'm 48 and I've been around the bend and you know, I, I already know what it's like to be angry at someone that has hurt you or um, you know, affected your, what you want it. What I wanted and what he wanted initially seemed like the same. And then it changed. And I can't blame him for changing, right? I can just be like, okay, cool. Let's roll with it. And it doesn't make him a bad guy for being with a woman that he was once with. It doesn't make him a bad guy at all. I think it just made him a little vulnerable and a little confused. And I know he now is at times confused when he's hanging out with me, living the, you know, Gringo, life, gringo lifestyle and pure business because he works with me all the time. I bought the motorcycle that he rides and I said to him, listen, bro, I am not hiring a motor concho. No way, no way at all am I hiring a motor concho when I have a motorcycle. So you are going to be my motor, my moto made dude and we're going to work together. And of course I pay him to work with me. Um, the motorcycle's paid off. And, you know, I'll put a little gas in, but it is such a convenient, such a convenient work force the two of us have together because I'm, I'm in, I love it. You know, um, he's always on time. He never lets me down. Um, he knows how I work. He knows how serious that I can get. He knows exactly how I am when I'm videoing apartments, what he does for me, and he just has my back. So I forgave him for that. but. Just um, now, today, him and I were at Mojitos here in Cabarete because we finished work and we were, you know, chit-chatting about business and future ideas and everything. And he's like, serious, you know, he's like, I know we're not in the position where we once were, but would you consider not opening up a restaurant upstairs, but would you consider maybe a cafeteria, like a gentleman's club where guys can come over, they can, you know, um, kind of kick their feet up, play dominoes upstairs, order a few really nice drinks, smoke a couple of cigars if they like, go on the beach, get a massage, you know, just kind of like a pass the time type of thing. And he's like, and if they want a meal, they can order it and it can, you know, be cooked for them. If there's a barbecue upstairs as well if they want a barbecue or something like that. So it's kind of like a lighter end of what we had in mind initially. And, you know, I said to him, sure, why not? Like again, I, I trust the guy impeccably. He just never taken any money from me at all. Um, unlike other people who I've dated in the past here and like just take 2000 pesos out of my purse like it's nothing. Or even like always taking 100 pesos, 100 pesos, 100 pesos. 2000 pesos is 40 bucks. 100 pesos is like two bucks, right? So, um, you know, I, I always have to hide my money from my, I'm not gonna say any names, because I, I don't really wanna knock anybody, you know what I'm saying? So I'm just gonna say ah, X, and, um, because I've had a couple of men, three, <laughs> since I've been here. So, um, you know, it was ah, X, and I mean, just always taking, taking money out of my purse, stealing my perfume, anything that that person could get their hands on that was mine they made it theirs and it was just always like why do i have to hide my stuff why do i have to look after the person left to see what was taken you know joelle's not like that joelle is not like that so i at any day i will pass up the sex i will pass up the commitment i will pass up any type of a relationship for somebody that i can actually trust in real life I understand that men sometimes have desires outside of the woman that they're dating. I get that. It doesn't mean that they're a negative, evil person at all. And But again, I, I actually tried to forgive him. Let's back up a little bit. I did try to forgive him and I did try to put myself in a position of saying, ah, oh, he's younger and oh, he's with me all the time and, and how can he cheat again and 
I caught them and all that stuff, but I, I can't, I just can't lower my standards of being with a man that, that, that doesn't mirror me. But when it comes to other things, you know, I, I'm pretty sure that I, I, I got a good guy to work with and that's it. We're friends and I love it. I love it. I love, I don't love being single, but I do love loving myself. Um, and hola series, nueva jers, hola. And vet Garcia, what dental work did you do? Uh, did you receive and cost? Very good question. So, I really didn't do much. Joelle had a sore tooth that he had to get pulled out, and as a friend, I got that pulled out for him. Um, and he also got his teeth cleaned. That cost. Um, 2,500 pesos for, no, 1,000, oh, I forget now. It was 2,000 for the both of us. Um, no, mine was 2,000, mine was 2,800, and his was 1,200. The, getting the tooth pulled was free because he has insurance. And um, then the cleaning itself, cleaning for the teeth was 1200 for Joelle and then also for me. But then I also have like right here, I had, I don't know if you can see, like jagged, the teeth are jagged. And um, I don't like that because obviously it just looks <laughs> jagged, right? And then this tooth right here, like is sticking out and a little discolored. So um, I spoke to them about that. And so they put a little bit of whitening here, just a tiny bit. And then they filed this tooth to make it even with the other one a little bit. And it made a little cosmetic difference. But they suggested that I need to go in again for this tooth and get braces. And um, braces are gonna be on for a year. I don't know if I really need braces. I am a type A personality where I'm like, just roll with it, you know, messy hair, I don't care type of thing. But um, I think we all have our little things that bother us. And um, that was that's one of the things that kind of used to bother me due to the discoloration. But um, I might get the braces. They stay on for a year and it costs a thousand bucks, right? American. So a thousand bucks American to get your teeth straight in one year is not bad at all and a lot of you guys really do need braces and you really don't have the money to pay those high dental costs in your country so when you come here you can just definitely you know get them put on here now the only thing i would say you have to get them tightened once the, once a month like they tighten the the um the wire and if you have a really cool dentist back home and you just pay them for each visit to get it tightened once a month it might save you on costs i don't know how that would go but you would have to talk to your dentist about that in america or germany or italy or wherever you live canada and get that all figured out before you come here for the dental work now a lot of people do come here for dental work it is a lot cheaper like i said cleaning your teeth a thousand pesos which is 20 bucks Oh, I, I don't know if I told you how much. 1,200 pesos is like 24 bucks. It's less than 24 bucks to have your teeth clean. Imagine. And they do a good job. I did a video on teeth cleaning um, just like about two weeks ago, I think, or a week and a half ago. So you guys should check it out because I did. I showed the whole entire dental office. I showed the supplies. Like I even did the whole, the whole video of them pulling Joelle's tooth out. And the dentista, the, she's a woman, a dentist, she wasn't even nervous. She wasn't even like, oh, please don't film. Like, you know, just in case she made a mistake or something like that, <laughs> you know? She was just like, sure, it's okay. And I loved that, you know? It just shows the confidence that she has in her own work. And um, I, I, really, I really appreciate that. So definitely, if you're gonna get your teeth done and you are contemplating coming here, and you're a little nervous, please check out that video so you can see the dental standards compare here compared to where you're from. I, I'm pretty sure you'll be surprised. I was surprised, and I don't say that, I don't say that right now. Um, like I, I say it gingerly, 
because now that I know the Dominican Republic the way I do, I feel so embarrassed to even think that I would think they didn't have proper dental chairs or like I was thinking I was going to go into an office that was like seedy and third world like no absolutely not it's actually nicer than some of the Toronto dental clinics that I have been in and spent way more money you know what I'm saying like oh my gosh I have to get all these fillings done I have and as you guys can see I'm just so open <laughs> open pun intended but um yeah, like I have to get all these fillings done again. And I got them in Toronto like about three years ago. So, and when I got them checked here, they looked at them and they're like, if you want, we can do them again. You don't have to get them done again, but like we could do a better job. And I know that's so true and for less cost. So please don't knock the system here. Look at that video that I put up and really put your hands um, and your faith and your money into the pockets here for people who aren't going to try to take your pants off you. Um, so Alfredo, no trade will get over it. She will accept Hero at some point. Oh, I really hope so, Alfredo. DJ Buggin, <laughs> Buggin Hard. I love that. Tell me, DJ Buggin Hard, do you have any of your own beats? As I want to make a new um, intro and outro for this year coming up in January. Um, and I mean, I like that intro every single day. <laughs> you know, I make something great or whatever that intro is. Um, but I, I do want to change it up a little bit. And I want you guys who are people who make your own tracks. To send me something, something that suits my personality, something that I can have fun with, and something that I can use um, to edit with with my um, new intro for January. All right, let's see here. Um, Ninja Warrior, dude. I literally opened a bank account with Banco Santa Cruz in 2012, and I put in like 13k. You put 13k in it secured it for two years at eight percent interest thirteen thousand thirteen thousand dollars right not pesos that's a pretty good deal you did you have a ninja warrior dude ninja warrior dude do i know you chaz 55 I was at Flip Flop last week. I was only there for a day and drove back to Santiago. I was hoping to run into you, but I'll be back next month. Aw, thanks Chaz. No worries. I'll see you next month. Come to Cabarete. Uh, Ninja Warrior Dude. They said if I don't take the money out or call them, then the money would, look, would lock in for another two years at 8% interesting so that's awesome that they're like telling you come get your money dude <laughs> or we're locking it back in and investing it again <laughs> the real boxing fan i left the question on your prior video with my contact info okay what question douglas anderson roll the tape certain natives trying to tell us we obligated to do food and money and clothes donations in DR apart from the money we spend on vacation. I said, dude, I gave 120000 to businesses, individuals, Douglas, in DR over the last nine years. That's not enough. King Griff. Hey, King Griff. What's up? <laughs> King Griff. Who are you talking about? Gino? No, 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 no. King Griff. Oh, no. Um, <clears throat> Douglas Anderson, he was asking about the person that's stealing money, uh, Demi Catera, from my purse. And uh, no, Joelle's never ever stole from me. I want to set that record straight right now, guys. Joelle has treated me like royalty. He has made me feel like, aside from the whole, again, the whole cheating thing, we weren't even together long enough for me to hurt, for me to, for me to hate. For me to regret you know i just totally changed it up i was like okay you're not my man you are my friend because that's how valuable his friendship is to me and that's how valuable i know i am to him and i feel like he feels bad that he did it you know and and i think he he respects me too that i'm not like 
you know, um, crying and begging and, um, you know, uh, compromising. You know, I think he's like, okay, this woman has self-respect and she just wants to um, still have, you know, a friend and it's okay. I'm not going to throw the baby out with the bathwater, but that other one that you mentioned, King Griff, there's no more baby. Let's just keep it like that without me even talking anymore because you know I tried last Sunday. <laughs> Douglas Anderson, I think. Jun Jun, 100, 100, sounds like a lounge. Great idea. Thank you. I'm going to try it out. We'll have to see, right? A gentleman's club requires ladies. Oh my gosh, that's what Smith said today, a guy that we met up with um, at Mojitos. Um, he said, Suri, so you're going to have women there for the gentlemen? And I was like, um, no, they can get their women in Sosua quite easily. And he's like, okay. But in, in, I don't know if you guys want to bring your women with you. Obviously, you come for a couple of drinks and go get couples massages on the beach. But no. It's not my thing. I don't provide women. And any women that I have anyway aren't like any women friends that I have, they're not into all that. They're just they're looking in they're looking for loves, real loves. I had I had a dude contact me the other day and uh, he said, Cerise, I'm looking for a woman. And I said, Oh, what kind of woman are you looking for? And he's like, I'm looking for a serious woman. I want to take her back to America marry her and have her for my wife now that's the type of woman I have I have those women because I'm 48 right so the women that I chill with are mature and they're my age or they're a little bit younger and they're hard-working women because we attract who we are right I'm not hanging around with working girls that are like 28 years old so I'm not gonna have those girls around me it's maybe to say hi to in the street or girls that watch my videos or girls that send me story time and I respect them and I love them to pieces and we hail each other up in the street hugging you know giggle and everything of that nature girly girl thing but they're not really women that I feel would be suitable for a long-term relationship or uh, marriage so and, and some of the women in Sosua are don't get me wrong because I know a lot of working girls that are amazing housewives but if they don't want to be made into a housewife and they're a little trifling then obviously it's gonna be difficult for you but and difficult to find love but the women that I know from Sosua and Cabarete and Gaspar Hernandez and Bella Vista and Porta Plata and um, also Sahana and all over they are more uh, a little older, they're a little more mature, and yes, they're looking to get set up nicely. But I'm not even going to have them here when you guys come for your little gentleman's club. It's for you guys to come, kick your feet up as dudes, chit-chat with each other, play some dominoes, you know, listen to some music, have a barbecue, kind of like a guy's day as opposed to a guy's club, if you will. Get some massages on the beach, but also feel free to bring your girls with you. Um, let me see. That's not cool when you have to hide your money in your place. You're right, Nueva Jers. What are you talking about? I love what you just said. It's not cool. It's such an uncomfortable feeling to be like, okay. And sometimes there were times where I would forget where I hid my money. And that was even the worst because I'd be like, oh my gosh, because there was hiding spots that he would find out. And I was like, oh my gosh, where did I put that money? You know, no, that's just a stress. I didn't even want that. Mm -mm. That's just ridiculous. And um, Stray Python, stealing your perfume. Out here. Um, you know, my son sent, my son realized I wasn't, going to be leaving anytime soon so he sent down with a friend of mine all my perfumes and some of my perfumes were original all of them were original but some of them were Chanel uh, Bulgari uh, Versace um, oh my gosh like Boucheron um, I think it's called Van Cliff and apparels or something like that a lot of beautiful beautiful uh, perfumes and now, my, like, I probably have about 12 perfumes now, and um, 
the ones that I have out, I'll, I'll show you guys. Um, the, I haven't bought any new perfumes here. I'm just trying to get my slippers on. I haven't bought any new perfumes here because a lot of them are knockoffs and you don't really know what you're buying. But um, not in Santiago, I'm pretty sure. Or in Santo Domingo is pretty safe. But here we go right here. So if like, here's, I think. So this one is Chloe, Chanel, Chanel, uh, Boucheron, um, Vera Wang. Uh, there was a Hermes. But they're so, they, they last for so long and he would spray them on like they were water and like, oh, he would just use them and waste them and he didn't understand the value of them. And then when we would have an argument, they would go missing and then I would see them like later. It was just ridiculous. Joelle's not like that. And I'm really happy. I'm not saying any names about the past. So please guys, don't assume. I don't want this person coming after me and, you know, saying anything, but this person is probably watching. And if you're watching, I'm not saying anything about your name. I'm just speaking truth because I feel that it's only fair. And the reason why I would still, you know, uh, cohort with, with Joel after he actually did something very, <clears throat> very unnerving, but I went with it. Um, let me see. What's the dentist? Ken Griff, the dentist, she's here in Cabarete. If you look on the video, um, message me privately, and then if you if you can't find the video link, it should be like two weeks ago. Right, right down the list, just look down the list, and you'll see the dentist, and you'll see Joelle's mouth is open. Um, and in that video, at the very end, it was a live to air, and at the very end, I show her business card and her name, and you can WhatsApp her and tell her that you're coming, and you can even send her your photos. You can even send her x-rays of your, your mouth ahead of time. And then that way she can get a good view of what you want and she won't have to do too much preliminary um, testing when you get here. And I would suggest all you guys to do that because she's that cool. And um, she can help you get a nice set of teeth. Uh, Vet Garcia, go for it. I'm 37 with braces. Join the team. All right. <laughs> Aww. Really? <laughs> I like that. Thank you. I'm a type A personality too. I'm one of those people where I'm like, okay, I have this tooth here. But you know, at the same time, I do want to do something for my 50th birthday. Um, not do something for my 50th birthday. Sorry. I want to be, I want to be, uh, for my 50th birthday, I want to, and it's not even really 50 because I'm going to be 49. And I just want to say even for my 49th birthday, but because I have to keep the braces on for a year, I might as well just say 50. So at 50, I want to do a lot. Like, you know, I do want to lose my weight. And, you know, I, I'm doing I'm doing good with that now. Um, <clears throat> you know, alcohol, I think, is a big factor in my life, to be honest with you guys. Um, a lot of drinking goes on sometimes when we go to meet up with people, especially when I'm hanging out with a lot of you guys and we have such a good time. And then especially where there's no like weekend party in here really because for us expats we're here we'll go out every single day of the week and so when i'm not meeting with you guys or if i'm doing something i will show up for like a beer or whatever or a wine and it has a lot of sugar in it it's a lot fattening and i did quit for a short while and i said i was going to quit for 60 days that 60 day challenge and i ended up having a couple of drinks again and then i felt guilty and i was like you know what I said to myself, you know what, Sarish, you gotta love yourself a lot more. You have to love yourself in a way where that 60 day challenge is, should be, be a 60 day, day challenge. That should be a new lifestyle. So now I'm on that cold tip and I'm, I'm looking out for my health. I have a few things that I wanna get in order. So I have to lose weight. And then I also, and I've been talking about that forever. So I don't even wanna talk about that any longer, but I'm gonna start doing videos on working out and um, showing my whole entire body, like exercising on the beach and stuff like that, and then my weight, and I might even do it in a bikini, right? Like just to show you guys the chunk, the chub, <laughs> chub rock. You guys remember that rapper back in the day, chub rock? So um, I'll show you guys my chub and everything like that, and just to show you, for those of you, to in inspire you guys who wanna do the same thing, um, and also just to kind of show you guys that it can be done. 
and I so by 50 I want to have the weight gone I want to have more muscle mass I want to just feel so alive I want to just be like you know every day exercising on the beach it's one of my dreams just to like get up in the morning and jog the beach with Noche and now my new dog Hero um, but I don't have that energy just to keep it real I do oh my gosh I wake up five o'clock in the morning I can wake up early in the morning I'm an early riser but I'm like on my cell phone working or I just pull over my laptop and I have my coffee and you know I mean these days I haven't been really making it to the beach at all and when I do it's literally to sit and watch Noche enjoy herself and I watch the sun rise or if it's at nighttime I'll watch the sun fall and that's about it and so I, I really need to love myself more and I really need to just kind of like play with my life in regards to a new lifestyle tweak it I, I have a good life I love my life I, I love the people who are in it and you know it, it's pretty cool but I just I need to pay more attention to me at this point in my life and, and I encourage you guys to do the same thing as well so thank you for that vet I'm definitely going to look into getting the braces Okay, Douglas, not needed. Oh, look it. A okay. pee. A little bit. Um, Nueva Jez. Braces are 5,000 here in the U.S. 5,000? See? And right here it's 1,000. I spent 1,000 bucks on a motorcycle. Like, two months ago, I guess it was. Three months ago. And I, I don't even know how to ride it. And I'm not interested any longer in in riding a motorcycle since sean died rest in peace sean um and i know we're all different and i know that he didn't have a lot of experience on the pasola when he fell off it and i know that there's all different factors that go around it and i'm not living on fear but it's just not an interest i'm, I'm really leaning towards getting a car so mm. If you guys are wondering what I'm drinking, I'm drinking water with ginger and lime. Okay, let's see what else we have going on here, guys. Douglas buying a car. Oh, Douglas, um, I hate American dentists nowadays. Um, you feel like you're in a car dealership buying a car. Yes, I think so. And Nueva, <laughs> Nueva J. Shares, says facts it is like that right you go in there and you feel like their lawyers trying to give you a good deal on a deal or something Alfredo it depends on the person as well when it comes to braces I had braces as a teen and when I took them off the teeth looked great but in my case the split in my teeth came back so just be ready in case okay let me back up a little bit thank you for that reminder DJ Buggenhard and let me know, DJ Buggenhard, if you are um, going to send me a beat, if you have any, or any of you guys else. So when I was younger, I had braces. And, um, and I, I had these two teeth right here. Now, these two teeth right here came over these two a little bit. And it's happening again. They, like, grow back. They go back to normal. Now, this tooth right here, the one that's giving me issues, that was an extra tooth up here. And what the dentist did, and I don't know why he did this till this day, I'm like, oh my gosh, he must have been new. But he pulled out my tooth that was good, and he put the brace on to bring down the extra tooth. And his reasoning was that the extra tooth must have wanted to be in my mouth. So that's what he did. But I think he was just trying to test things out, you know? I don't know, anyway. Um, that tooth now is trying to go back up. And that's what the issue is. It's turning and it wants to go back up to its original position. And that's what it's been doing. And it discolored and everything. So they have offered to pull this one out. And then I have one in here that it's pushing down and they're gonna bring it out. And then that way, you know, so it's a long process and pulling of teeth and everything. Um, but I mean, it is what it is. and. I'm 90% sure that I'll try it out. Uh, let me see. Nueva Jers. Nueva Jers. Um, well, that's crazy after spending all that money. See? 
Yoga Yoga, great info. Thank you. Al Al, que lo que series. <laughs> What's up, Al? And the real boxing fan. I sent to your Gmail. Okay. You sent to my Gmail the information on boxing? Or uh, I'll see my Gmail. Okay. Nueva Jers, yeah. Uh, King Griff, <laughs> laughter. Uh, Douglas Anderson. No, I said you was talking about Joel when you was talking about the breakup. Oh, yeah. No, Joel and I broke up. Yeah. But, again, I, he's just such a good guy. My gosh. Like, I can really vouch for him. I really like him. Not romantically. We're not, we're not intimate anymore at all. Not even hugs. And even on the back of the bike, I don't even have an urge to hold him or even touch him. I just put my hands on my own knees when I'm on the back of the bike. When we're on the back of the bike, it's not. It's just like he's a motor concho. And we, we, we're chill with that. We're good with that. I think we, we realize that we're just not uh, for each other. But it's so great to have a companion, you know? Because I'm here alone. Robert Bruce. Hey, Robert from Toronto. Toronto in the house. Douglas Anderson. Then it won't be a gentleman's club, just a bar or a happy hour bar. <laughs> okay, and that's what I'm going to make it as. Your ideas are always great, Douglas Anderson. When you do come here, you and I are going to do some business together. <laughs> Why don't I just call the whole place quarantinis and then I'll just make it a happy hour bar and people can come between the hour of something and something. <laughs> Every day or on weekends. <laughs> All right, vet Garcia, please do your own story time series. I'd love to know how Joelle's current woman feels about him continuing a friendship with you. By the way, you were absolutely correct to name him Quarantine Fling. <gasps> I did name him Quarantine Fling. Isn't that something? Yes, and that's, yeah. And like quarantine was supposed to end this Sunday, but it's not, it's going on for, another month but um we get another two hours taken off i mean put put on right so they're giving us another two hours in each day um but yeah i did call him quarantine fling talk about that for intuition and uh, we're just really cool is that oh it is hero in the background and noche by my feet let's see what happens here oh let me show you guys it she left she's not interested in him but it's oh oh wait hello my love do you like him okay well he's being patient She's trying. <laughs> I mean, he's trying. And she's just like, mm. she's playing hard. But you are right. She will get used to him. She'll have no choice. But yeah, I will do a story on him. Um, you know, I, I, I will do a story on, a story time on my breakup with him because it's very interesting. I learned a lot from myself. I never had a man cheat on me so openly and I never caught a man cheat on me either. And I think I handled it like a real champ. And I was like, wow, is this how it feels to like have someone just be so deceitful to you? And, you know, um, and then I thought about the woman and then I saw pictures of the woman. And then I did something very bad. I put a side by side. I, <laughs> I can't show you guys because then you'll know what, who she is. And I don't want to call her out like that. But I did a side by side of Princess Fiona and her. Princess Fiona is Shrek's wife. And that was mean. I know it was mean because, I mean, come on. I'm sitting here talking about my fat and my teeth and all that stuff. And it was mean because I'm not a perfect woman at all. But it was my retaliation. And um, that's what I did. I did a whole little photo grid of Princess Fiona and her. And they do look alike a little bit, right? So I wasn't being a, like total B-I-T-C-H. 
But Princess Fiona is a pretty girl too, right? <laughs> I was just like, <laughs> for like a day. And then I let it go. Um, and uh, she knows about me, I'm pretty sure, from my videos. And I know, oh my gosh, she knows about me because she was checking my Facebook. That's how I, oh man, and there's just so many ins and outs about this, but I don't want to go into it right now, but this woman was stalking my Facebook to the point where, and she was stalking my Facebook through Joelle's account, and he didn't even have access to his account, and I knew he didn't have access to his account because he was with me, and he was not on his cell phone, him and I are watching a movie, then all of a sudden I just pick up my cell phone to look at my messages and go through my WhatsApp and go on Facebook for a minute, and then I see that he looked at my story, his account looked at my story, and I'd be like to him, like, you're not online right now, this says that you're online right now, and he's like, I don't know who it is, and I'm like, well, you better figure out who it is, <laughs> this is not normal, and um, so she was like checking out my stories and everything, so she knew who I was, and um, she knows who I am, and I think she's aware that I bought the moto, the motorcycle, and she knows that he works with me because sometimes I catch him on video, you know, like lately I haven't been putting him on my rental videos and my videos and stuff like that because I don't want her, believe it or not, I don't want her to think that he is intimately, in, like, like there's some intimacy going on with the two of us. I want her to know that he is, um, being loyal to her if he's still with her I don't I don't even think he's still with her I really do feel that it was probably uh, um, like temptation on his behalf but I can't be a man that's gonna be tempted to go have sex with his ex like you know all the time and stuff like that and um, I, I do know that there's some other stuff going on and everything like that so um, you know but again, I'll get into that story time. I will do a special story time, maybe even a live to air story time um, about it all because I don't want to make him seem like the bad guy. You guys know, there's a lot of guys that come down here and cheat on their wives. And you've been married for many years. And it's not that your wife doesn't make you happy. It's not that your wife doesn't cut it. It doesn't, it doesn't mean anything to you. It just means that you find it fun to come down here and get yourself a woman and stuff like that. Um, and sometimes there's no rhyme and sometimes there's no reason. I know some of you guys, when I meet up to get you an apartment, you'll say to me, Cerise, um, I, I, I I, I love your channel and I love watching your channel. I love your story time and I love the apartments you show, but don't video me. And I'm like, okay. And that's it. Some guys are like, don't video me. My wife will see it. She watches all of your videos. And I'll be like, no, I, I, I won't video you. It's none of my business. It's, it's not my business. It's a, I'm not, you're, you're not coming to me for marriage counseling. You're coming to me for an apartment. It's none of my business. So I've grown accustomed to knowing here in the Dominican Republic since I've been here. When I was in Canada, I was disgusted to my core when I would hear that a man would cheat on a woman and when a woman would cheat on a man. Disgusted to my core and I had absolutely no understanding of it and I just felt like if you're with someone and you're committed to them, then it's going to have to be perfect or nothing at all. But now I, I think differently and I think that not everybody is the same and not everybody is capable of being with one person and that's unfortunate but i am not going to be with one person that can't be with me only and i'm with that one person right so again a mirror i just want a mirror that's it but he's still my friend so i don't want to knock him um a lot of you guys told me that he'd be doing that anyway um okay let's see here Robert Bruce, looking like DR, not going to happen this winter. Why? You're not going to come for DR this winter? Nueva Jers. I'm waiting for a new passport, but processing times range from three to four months. Woo! Douglas Anderson, dishonesty and stealing relationship. Yeah, uh, sorry, dishonesty and stealing relationship breakers. Yes, yes, stealing. Oh, that... That, you know what, I have to say because I've never had someone cheat on me in Canada and I've never had anyone steal from me in Canada and these are two different people that did that here 
And if I have to choose the lesser of the evils, I'd rather someone cheat. I mean, that, there is no, I'm not saying it's more honorable because there is no honor amongst liars and thieves and cheaters. There is no, no honor. But if I have to choose between the lesser of the evils, then you know what? Go have your side sex, please. Because that is, I'm not there and it doesn't really affect me, right? Like if I was a woman that would deal with that, right? Go do your side sex, but at least I need to trust you in other ways, in the house, with the money, with everything else, with business, with everything else. Now, my question is if he cheats with another woman, then how honest is he with money and how honest is he with other things? So then it becomes a question there as well. And so do I trust him impeccably with everything else? No, I mean, there's times where I will question, right? But I've never, thank God, thank God, I've never had to question um, Joel taking anything from me. He never asked for anything. Actually, last night he, he called me up and he's like, can I ask you a favor? And he didn't even know how to ask. Like he was just like laughing like a little boy and giggling. And he came upstairs here and um, he sat, we always, we have our office here, right? Like I sit on the, the love seat, he sits on the chair and we talk every single day. We have our little chat. And I like that too, because it, <clears throat> he's so patient with my Spanish and, and I learn a lot, you know? And so he said to me, I need a favor. And I said, what? And he said, can I borrow 500 pencils, which is $10. And I, um, and at the time I had 700 pencils on me and um, my bank card, I don't have my bank card. And so I knew I was gonna have to just have that money for today, just for something in the morning before I went to Western Union to pick up a transfer. And, um, and so I said to him, I said, can you wait till tomorrow? And he said, yes, no problem. I'll wait till tomorrow. We're working together tomorrow and you can pay me for the, for the day that I'm working, 500 if you like. And I was like, okay, no, no problems, you know, okay. And then he left. Today, um, I asked him, I said, you need that 500 now? And he's like, oh, it's, no, it's okay. And I said, why is it okay? You don't need it now? And he said, oh, no, I wanted them for a pair of tennis shoes. There was a druggie, a crack addict, that had a brand new pair of shoes, and he was just wanting to sell them really quickly for 500 pesos. Oh, boy, did I ever feel bad. The guy, the, the, you know, of course, the crack addict sold those quick. And I was like, oh, man. And it, it, he just told me that part last night. Then I probably would have sacrificed the 500 and just left myself with 200 until I went to Western Union. You know what I mean? And I felt really bad about that. But that's what I'm saying. Like, that's the dignity that he has um, as opposed to um, the other person. And also, again, I'd rather somebody be uh, that way. I don't know. Cheating is a hard thing. And I'm not saying that you guys are right for cheating or you women are right for cheating. I'm not saying that either because that's a deceitful thing. And that's just as bad as stealing out of someone's purse, right? But I don't know. There's just some type of a different element that um, I'd rather not sleep with the enemy because if someone steals from you, you you don't know really unless you catch them, right? And you're sleeping with them every single night. And then they're stealing from you not only money, but everything they can get their hands on, you know? Um, there's one other thing too that I, I don't, maybe I shouldn't really even say, but I mean, um, Noche had a leash, a beautiful vintage collar. And this person visited me, not Joelle, this other person visited me for um, just for a couple of hours. This was like about almost a year ago. And when the person left, Noche's chain was gone. Her beautiful vintage collar had like nice stones in it and everything. I told this person as a joke, I'm like, oh, look at her gold and diamond necklace. <laughs> and I put myself in that position probably because he probably believed it, but I was only saying it, it was like, but it was really nice. It was like cubic zirconia and everything like that. But he's probably thinking, gee, he did a lot for that. But, you know, it is what it is. I'd rather someone in my life that I can trust with my money and with my mind if I have to pick the lesser of the evils. I think at the end of the day, that's what I like. But some of you might be saying don't sacrifice, but sometimes you have to sacrifice. Um, 
And Alfredo, one has to cleanse the body. It is like an engine. You have to change the oil. That's right. King Griff, you still considering the surgery? I remember you talking about that. Yes, yes, yes. I was, and then I wasn't, and then I was, and then I wasn't. And um, I was going to use the surgery as a way to lose the weight because what they do is they lipo everything and they suck the fat out and then they put it in other areas so my breasts are large but what they would do is just like restructure my breasts take the fat out of here and here and in my back and put it in my bum and that's what i thought i would do but I changed my mind because I do want to give myself some credit for something, right? Instead of just saving the money for surgery, <laughs> anyone can do that. But I mean, I have a beach right here. I have dogs. Why aren't I outside running my butt up and down that beach like I said I want to? And my mind speaks to me in the mornings and says, Cerise, you don't need to run along the whole beach. Just run for one minute. Not even. Run until you can't run. And then walk. And then run. And then walk. And I'm lazy. Or I'm not disciplined enough to do it. Or something. Even today I said to myself, maybe I'll move back to Sosua so I can join the gym. <laughs> it's just such a silly thought. But that's the desperation behind it, right? So I am willing to work out. But I just decided I'll do it from home. Play some music. And... Like how I would do it in Canada before I came here, dance in front of the mirror, and you know, that's about it. I think just keep it real, but yes, once I get my body weight down, and I feel good about something that I did for myself, then I will go and get sculptured, um, as opposed to just getting everything rearranged and risking my life to that extent. I think surgery, any type of surgery, is risking one's life, but uh, I think at this point, I don't want to risk too much, you know? Again, lesser of the evils. I think if I get my heart rate going and I get my, you know, my weight down and I feel great about myself and I'm only going in there to get some extra skin cut off, then I lessen the risks, if you will. Because then I'm healthy, but I'm just loose, if you get what I mean. So yes, I am considering it and I most likely will go with it. Um, Zona, do you know how much Invis... Ah, I don't know Invisalign, um, how much it is, but look at that video or you can WhatsApp me and I will tell you um, the doctor's name that you can go to and she'll be able to tell you. But for braces, like normal braces, it is a thousand for one year for me. All right, Anderson. Cerise, you are a walking jukebox. <laughs> Thank you. Vet Garcia, when teeth revert, it's a telltale sign. Telltale sign that you didn't wear the retainer. That's a lifetime responsibility. I didn't wear the retainer. I didn't. Because it was here and then it came out my mouth and it, it was a little too tight. And so I didn't wear it. I was only supposed to wear it at night and I didn't. Oh, you're right. I wasn't disciplined enough. If you're buying a car, get a tester that you can plug into the test port under the steering wheel. It will tell you everything you need to know for an informed decision. Check your YouTuber, Scotty Gilmore. Scotty Gilmer. Okay, I'll do that. Thank you. Because hmm, I am getting a car soon. Um, Scott Gilmore has a video about different testers. Oh, okay, thank you. Stray Python, laughing. I saw a video you did some years ago back when you were teaching a class, laugh out loud. You must have been beating them off with a stick back in Canada. Oh, yes. Before I gained my weight? <laughs> Vet Garcia, during quarantine, Cocina, I asked you why you decided to show off your lovers again, and you said, uh, I show them, it. let me see. If I show them, if they're being dishonest, someone will come forward. You were right. I was right. I was. It wasn't that I was showing off my lover, but I was like, you know what? If I, if I put them on camera and I put them out there and I say, okay, this is who I'm seeing, someone's going to see it. This is such a small town, Sosua and Cabarete, or such a small island. 
um, you know, and a lot of Dominicans do watch the videos. And actually, just to go back to that whole situation, my friend Elsa in Los Chiromicos messaged me and she said to me, Cerise, are you okay? Like, because she sensed that I was maybe going through some challenges. And I said to her, I said, yeah, I'm good, I'm good. You know, Joelle let me down for a day or two, but I'm um, getting myself up. And um, she was like, oh, really, what was it? And I sent her the picture of the woman not beside Shrek's wife, <laughs> not beside Princess Fiona, but just the real picture. And um, she was like, give me a moment, I'm gonna get back to you. Well, lo and behold, this woman got back to me and told me where the woman lives. <laughs> She's like, I know where she lives, um, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is awful. I don't even wanna have any part of it. And I told her, thank you very much, but I, I don't want any more information, please. I don't need to know where the woman lives. I mean, the woman knows where I live and that's bad enough. You know what I mean? The woman knows that her, like, I don't know how long her and Joelle were broken up for and I don't know how long they reunited for. Um, but, and I don't care, I don't care. I couldn't care less. But I definitely don't need to know any more about her than what I do know. And there were some messages like that I did listen between the two of them because I have all the information I got all the information and um, she just sounds like she's a very um, pushy woman you know like um, pushy woman and manipulative as well so I wish him luck with that and you know I, I think he's probably caught up in something that's not going to last very long and then he's going to realize that he lost something Good. I'm not saying she's not good. She could be good. I mean, she could be wonderful. There could be something about her that he really fell in love with and can't forget, you know? So I can't knock him for that. But yeah, again, um, it's a very small town and she did figure things out really quickly. And um, yeah, Elsa gave me the information and more of a down low on her. So yeah, it was very interesting. Um, let's see, St. J, hey, hey, St. J, King Griff, I have a friend looking for a job, no anyone hired me there. Ah, um, I don't know anyone hiring here, but is she Dominican or he Dominican? Because I do know there's a lot of call centers here that they can get with. And there's um, also, I've never been able to apply for it, but you guys might be able to. It's called Amazon Turk. Um, and it's just like the side thing that you can make money online. So I would say, you know what, you guys need to do money online. Try to get money made online as much as you can. Um, <clears throat> I had someone contact me the other day about Spanish lessons and they want to come here and they want to teach Spanish lessons and they want to know that it's possible for them to teach expats here while this person is still in America. I thought that was a beautiful idea. That's so smart because the Spanish teachers that I have here that I um, connect with people outside of here, um, you know, they make money that way through WhatsApp. They don't even have Skype or Zoom or anything like that, um, or Barnyard or Barnstream, whatever it's called. They have nothing like that. And they just talk via WhatsApp on video and they make money. And the people from around the world send the email money, not email money transfer, the Western Union transfer or the Caribbean Express transfer to me. And then I give the teachers the, their money. If they don't have their own ID, their own cellular or whatever, right? I help them out that way. So that's, that's pretty good if the person can just do something online and or use their skills here to do their own business because it is very easy to get a business rolling here. Um, and Alfredo, that, uh, that's true. I was never advised on it being a lifetime responsibility. It was told two years, but I'm good with my split <laughs> and my teeth. Where a wreck is way better now. My stepdad has a split in his teeth right here. And it's pretty big to a point where they actually had to put an extra piece there to make it look like an extra type of tooth because they couldn't put too much on each tooth because they would look like big teeth. My mom loves his split. And none of us even see his split. My stepdad, he's a great guy, but when he smiles, we smile because his smile is so beautiful. 
You know, we don't see a split. <laughs> and Douglas Anderson, he took it to the pawn shop. I bet you he did. I bet you he did. Um, <clears throat> I bet you he did. Yes. And um, um, I bet you he did. I, I have so many other things to say right now about so many other things. But I want to hold it down because I also don't want to... Um, I also don't want to seem, make it seem like I care this long after. I, I am still at times, um, or in Espanol, a veces, um, at times, I, I, when I think about it, like when I give them the opportunity to do it again, like the weekend that just passed, um, I get angry at myself. And I don't get angry at him any longer. And I think to myself, Cerise, you know, <clears throat> you need to be a little bit, like you need to hold on to grudges a little bit more. You need to remember um, the pain that you were feeling at that point and, and not act like it's not there. Like, like, I don't know. But then at the same time, I, I don't want to change. I want to be a forgiving person. I, I, I want to give people the benefit of the doubt. And I do. I, I want to give people the opportunity to change. But when they start stealing like 100 pesos and, and, and anything they can get their hands on, 100 pesos is two bucks. I know it's not a lot for me to complain about, but it's annoying when, you know, I, I don't have like, I don't know, it's annoying. It's, it's just, it's annoying. And it's, it, there's been a lot more that has been taken, but. It's just not important now, so I don't want to keep talking about it, but it's just fresh again, as it just happened again, and it's just fresh, so that's where I'm like, ugh, like, it's not even his fault. It's not his fault. It was, and, and it was 300 pesos that I just had out, right? Because it wasn't like 1,000 pesos or 2,000 pesos or 5,000 pesos. It wasn't like big dollar bills. They're, you know how you just leave like a couple of, in Canada, we have loonies and toonies. Um, I don't know if you guys in America have like, coins right our dollar bill we don't have a dollar bill and we don't have a two dollar bill again we have a loony which is like a one dollar and then we have a toonie which is a two dollar and um so you know how you just kind of keep your coins out well here that's what i'll do too like i even have one of those empty jug water jugs with change that i'll put into it right but um yeah it just i counted my dinero after he left because i was like and it wasn't even anything romantic. It wasn't even sexual or anything of that nature. It was just, I was hanging out with him because uh, he invited me somewhere and nobody else showed up. I was the only person. And he's like, if you want, you can come. Everyone else I invited isn't coming. And I felt bad for him. And that's my thing. I have a big heart. And so I said to him, okay, well, if you like, you can come by, you know, afterwards. And that's what he did. Like, out of 300 pesos, he takes one. Like, it's his. Like, he can just take it. And then I, I confronted him on it too. I was like, yo, mofo, <laughs> like, what are you doing? I'm trusting you again and you're doing this? And then he blocked me because he knows that you don't do that to a woman that, or a man, you just don't do that. And then he asked me to help make him famous and all this stuff. And I said, no, I'm not interested. I'm not interested. I can't, he's a person that I can't trust to go in any of my clients' homes. But Joel, oh my gosh, I could leave him with my purse. I, I leave Joel with my purse. If I have to go somewhere and do something, like if I'm videoing an apartment, I either put my purse down somewhere with my helmet or Joel will take my purse and hold on to it for me and stay out in the hallway. Nowadays, he'll stay out in the hallway because I don't get him on all the filming now because he knows that I don't need him on the filming and everything. He'll help me out a little bit, but every single cent is in my purse every single cent and today I, I, I gave him the money um, for helping me out and everything and he didn't even want to take it you know what I mean like he was fine with the meal that I bought him so a little bit different um, let's see St. J uh, Cerise how is Mr. G so, oh yeah he was yeah I don't want to talk about his is all that i'm so sorry um saint jay but you can private message me and i'll get into it there it's just that there could be a chance that he will be listening and i just don't want to talk about him like 
specifically. Well, I guess I, <laughs> you know what I mean, his business. <laughs> uh, Alfredo, forgive but never forget. Yes, and I, I'm trying so hard and I keep forgiving, but I, I at times I forget. And when I forget, um, it's because I believe in his potential. I believe in who he can be. He has dreams for his life, for his future, like anybody does. And he's somebody's son. He's somebody's brother. He's somebody's father. You know, somebody's uncle. And, um, you know, he's somebody's friend. Somebody's cousin. He's a person. And he um, deserves forgiveness, which I do, but I often forget. And um, I don't necessarily hold on to pain and I think it's an important thing to kind of detach but you're right um, remembering forget forgiving is forgiving but remembering what they did is good it's like when someone makes a fool out of you the first time then it's understandable but the second time you're the ass you know what I mean and that's why I keep getting angry at myself because I'm like I did it again he didn't do it again I did it again. He didn't change. How can a person change like that that quickly? But, I mean, I did it again. So I'm, I, I'm very, very comfortable calling myself the ass um, in this situation. Um, and I don't know if it's even logical to call myself an ass because I don't believe I am an ass at all. But um, I think what I'm trying to say is I understand that I, in this situation, I'm the one that needs to call the shots. And this is where I need to draw the line and just be like, we're cool, but don't contact me again. You know, we're cool, but do not ever speak to me in la calle. Don't, I don't even want to speak to me in the street. I have been building for the last two days this this speech that I'm gonna to say to him when he talks to me because he always we always ends up talking to me and I always end up saying hi you know because I can't hate on him I get it um, if he asked me for the hundred pistols I probably would have gave him all three all the three hundred pistols that I had and he knows that too but in any case um, I've been for two days trying to build up some type of something that I'm gonna to say to him when I see him and the, everything I want to say to him, it's just mean. And I, I don't want to be mean. And it just perpetuates the anger. Like, what am I going to say to him? Oh, you're a bum hole. Or, oh, wh why did you do that? I know why he did it. I know he's a bum hole. I know that he doesn't deserve to even spend two minutes with my soul. But why am I even trying to develop uh, an argument for him for when I do see him? I just need to be strong, or not even strong, because I am a strong woman, but I just need to be wise, and just be like, exactly like how you said, just be like, forget, I mean, forgive, <laughs> but don't forget, I can nod my head at him in the calle, I can just be like, yo, what's up, and that's it, and keep it moving, and I know I can do that, um, but <clears throat> there's something in me that just wants to be like, give him that finger and just be like, you know, F you, mofo. I just want to come right out and just like, just tear him apart, you know, like pow pow him with me boca, <laughs> you know, beat him with my mouth. Like just say every single thing that's runs through here and just let it vomit it out, regurgitate it on him. But why? There's no sense. And I know myself, if I was to do that, I would make myself look bad in the street. So I want to respect my character and I want to respect myself. And so you're exactly right. Forgive, but don't forget. And don't have them come around me any longer. Um, King Griff, it's your money. You have the right not to have people steal from you. Thank you. He blocked you after he stole from you. <laughs> he did. Because I called him out on it. I, uh, oof. And I, and, and I was not so, um, I was not so like how I was in the past. You know, and this time I came right out and I'm like, yo. At first I was calm. And I was like, yo, seriously? You did it again? Seriously? You know 
that I took you in and, and treated you good just now and you did it again and um, I left him two more messages after that and he didn't check the two more messages he just blocked me immediately because he knew what was coming and he was smart to block me too um, because um, I don't think I would have stopped with that message. I think I, if he got back to me, I think I would have got back to him and do more and more and more. So it was good that he actually blocked me because I don't think I would really want to have all those messages out in the universe and everything. Because you know what goes around comes around and how you handle the situation is how it's handled when the tables are turned, right? So I'd rather someone, if I, I'm not a perfect person and I would rather someone forgive me if I mess up too, you know? So I guess that's, it is what it is. Um, kleptomaniac, Mark, oh, you got it, klepto big time. Um, let's see, maldito, oh yes, he's maldito. Cerise, su perdida no la Tuya, your perdida, no la tuya. Yo no entiendo. Yo no entiendo que tú hables. Lo siento mucho, mucho. Perdita, do you mean my perro? My perdita? Mi noche? No la tuya. Yo no entiendo, no la tuya. ¿Qué es tuya? Oh, your English is very, your Spanish is very good, Douglas Anderson. People are in our, in an Alfredo, people are in our lives to teach us something. Good and bad is an emotional response. Take the lesson and learn. Absolutely. Thank you for that. Thank you. And I do believe that he did teach me some lessons and, you know, um, I'm cool with them. Jay Saint, hi Cerise, would you happen to know how much is the average dental implant is and how long the procedure lasts? No, no, I don't know about implants, but um, I do know that they are aware that people come down here for dental work and have very limited time here because they have to either get back to the States or Canada or Germany or Italy or Africa or Jamaica or wherever. and. Um, then, you know, they obviously um, speed up the process. But they do it with, with, uh, with the knowledge of knowing that they have to take care of you, right? So that's pretty cool. Like making sure that they're not gonna do too much work at too much time. Um, but I do have a dentist, so if you WhatsApp me, Jay Saint, I can give you her number, or if you look at my video, at the end of the video that I have, about the dentist, at the end of the video, I give out her number and her card. Fernando. I used to date a guy named Fernando in Cuba. There's the famous pink bike helmet in the background. <laughs> ah, yes. <laughs> You're right, right there. <laughs> My pink helmet. Thank you to um, Tyrone Gilbert for that. He brought it like two years ago. And I have mine. I love it. Um, he brought one also for someone else, but they lost it. Um, Alfredo, I say to myself when I give, I give, I have received 1,000 times what I have given, and it is good to all concerned. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, I have received 1,000 times what I have given. Ooh, that is perfect. That is perfect. Thank you. I think I just got a million bucks in my head <laughs> from what I gave. And I'm going to get that back a thousand times. I love that. Thank you so much. You guys pay heed to that. If you are ever taken advantage of and you've given to someone that or has, you know, taken from you and you didn't willingly give, then just consider it like an early Christmas present to them if you can't get it back. And also look at it as you being in the position of receiving now as opposed to losing. That's beautiful. Thank you so much for that. I love that, Alfredo. Um, Isaac, where are the piggies? Oof. That's another blessing in the fact that um, Joel did what he did because 
um, at that point, just before I found out, um, I stopped the pig farm. I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. Um, I was naming these pigs. I bought three, four, four, one for here in Capadete for Joelle's other business here, and three for Gaspar Hernandez. And uh, when I saw their characters and when I saw who they really were, like these pigs have very intelligent minds and they reminded me of dogs, but they cried like humans. And then after doing a little research on the pig anatomy and how closely related it is to a human, I think with chromosomes and stuff like that, I don't follow me, do your own research, but something like that, um, I was pretty disturbed. And I thought, um, you know, it's different when you are a meat eater and you are getting your meat from the grocery store and it's raw and it's full of blood and you know something was done to it but if you were to go in there and it was your pet that you were eating it's a lot different right so and if you're a vegetarian right i was a vegetarian most of my life and when i came here um sometimes i started to eat meat in december when my vitamin b12 went down and so i would start to eat a little bit of chicken and everything like that and that came to a real big halt when I got a little pet chicken for a day or two and realized I couldn't keep it because I was living in Los Chiramicos and it was just pooing all over my place. It was just pooping, walk in the kitchen and just poop as I was cooking. <laughs> it, was like a, it was a girl pig, I mean a girl chicken and I named her Melissa because the, the, the family that we took the chicken from, the little girl that her dad was the owner of the farm, her name was Melissa. So I named the pig, uh, the, the chicken Melissa. Well, uh, I, I just couldn't, I couldn't have her in the house anymore because she was pooing, pooing, pooing. And my landlord wasn't cool with it. So I had to call Elsa to come and take her. <clears throat> Excuse me. And when Elsa came and took her, um, Elsa did what any Dominican would do or any person that's used to the country life because Elsa is a country woman. She turned the chicken upside down and held it by its two feet and just walked with it like a cart, like a purse, like a cartera. And I was like, no, <laughs> hold her the way I hold her, you know, hold her by her, her wings and cuddle her. And she really, I saw a, a personality come out of that chicken when, um, when I had Melissa. So the same thing with the pigs. These animals are not stupid. They're all like dogs and they all sleep, they all, eat they all think they have their personalities on one of the videos that i put up the little piglet put his head on it on a little on a little um stone and he was comfortable just sleeping like that with his other little foot under him and they dream they dream so i, I couldn't do it i was like no i can't do it um and even till now i'm not able to cook pigs at all like even like for noche or I just I can't do it today I ordered a salad at mojitos and, and um, it comes with chicken inside like a whole bunch of chicken and I said to them please leave the chicken on the outside and Joelle ate it I just I can't do it <laughs> um, 914 in why way hi sir Aww. I'm good honey how you doing Isaac you are such a kind person. Aw, aw, thank you. I don't know if it's kind or just, oh, just, just remembering the cries from that mother, from the pig. I remember, I named them Pampers, Pinky, and Carmelita. And Carmelita, she was just like so cute. She walked like a little woman, you know, she was all pink and like she had her own little markings on her and she liked me and i liked her and they knew that i could save them they knew that i could save them but they didn't know i was the one buying them and um i felt like a real hypocrite and i i, I just I couldn't do it so thank you for saying i'm kind but i just felt like i was just a hypocrite you know and i got my head together and i realized that it was for the best just to break everything up <laughs> um 
Saint J. I understand about him. I'll hit you up later. You're a sweet lady. A good man will come your way. Positivity and only positivity. Nothing less and nothing else. Ah, Saint J. Ah, thank you, baby. Jamar W. Thanks for this video. I plan on opening up a savings account with Banco de Leon next month. Okay, I saw uh, I saw Banco de Leon as well. Now, do you know what? That, why are you going with them? Because I'll go open up a bank account with them too. Hit me up and let me know um, what the differences are, and then I'll do a video on them as well. Hey, I mean, competition is good for business, and it's always good to know what's going on out there, especially when it comes to investments. And so, to get back to investments, just before I let you guys go, um, I got so much information today, so if you guys are ready, to open up your account, you can do that. Remember, you only need 10,000 pesos to get a CD, which is a certificate of deposit. 10,000 pesos is roughly 200 American bucks, and you can get invested here. Lock it in for three years, lock it in for a year. Yes, yeah, not a lot of money. Yes, it's not going to get you a lot of, um, a lot of interest, but at least it's a start, right? It's some money, and why just put money in a bank? when you can put money somewhere else and have it make money for you. Um, and that's also establishing credit. That's, if you put in 40,000 in your CD, you can get a credit card and establish credit. So I have a lot more information here for you guys, but I also have a client that I have to speak to um, from Toronto. And I believe I'm running a little bit late. Yes, I am. So. I will chit chat with you guys soon. I just at least wanted to do a little live to air Wednesday because I wanted to keep up that mem that momento, momentum, momentum. <laughs> and I wanted to keep that up, you know. Um, next Wednesday, I'm going to have a guest on. We'll be back into protocol. That's the plan, but you never know what happens. But um, I will make sure I let you guys know who that person is. And thank you so much, you guys, for always joining me. Thank you so much. You guys are so sweet with all your comments here and your support. And if you need any more information about bank accounts, you just WhatsApp me. Any more information about doctors here and dentists and anything at all. Apartments, you guys know I got your backs already with the apartments. I talk down the landlords as much as I can in price. So if you find a place on Airbnb, um, and you're looking for a lower price, contact me and give me the information for the landlord and I will contact the landlord and see if I can get it at a cheaper price for you. Because once I have my hands on that place, I can um, pretty much assure that landlord that I will always bring in clients. That's how I do it, right? I get you guys cheaper rates by telling that landlord that I will always use their place. So they're not ever going to be without a client. And um, I think that's a pretty good selling feature for you guys as well um, who want to save money here. So if there is a place as well, if you guys have a place here, call me up. I want to give a shout out to Anthony today who's an American and he has a, a condominium in downtown Sosua and he contacted me yesterday and he was like, Cerise, can you please come and visit my place and video it for me, please? So I can't make promises that people are going to rent your place, but I can definitely give you my word that it will go up on my YouTube channel. I will feature it, and it will stay up there forever, and I will never take it down. The only way I would take it down is if the landlord proved to be disrespectful to any of my clients or if the landlord tried to take money or try to take advantage of any of my clients then of course i will never deal with that landlord again and take the video down but thankfully enough i've only had to ever take one video down and that was because the woman was just disrespectful and she was a canadian go figure a russian canadian so go figure <laughs> um she wasn't a dominican and um, i was gonna call her out on facebook because we have a few common friends and I was gonna call her out on Facebook and just be like, guys, blah, 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 blah. But again, I just let lion dog sleep. Sometimes I like to be a stoic. If you guys don't know what stoicism is, look up stoic. It's, it's, a, it's a way of life and it's just not being attached to things or people or places. And it's just kind of allowing life to take place and learning as we go along. So that was only one landlord that ever messed up in my books and I will never ever rent out her place again or ever even 
deal with her because I want you guys to be number one. I want, I've gotten into a few doozies with a few landlords here. Um, one landlord, <laughs> one landlord, I'll just say the story before I go. One landlord was so sweet. Um, he rented out the apartment that my client was supposed to go into and I didn't know. And when my client arrived, my client was like, you know, where's my apartment? And the landlord was like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. You know what, the apartment's rented out, but I am going to give you, oh, I thought I saw someone walk by, but, and it's not possible because that's a balcony. <laughs> but um, he said, I'm so sorry, but I'm going to give you another apartment. And you know what the landlord did? The apartment that my client was renting was 250 a month or maybe 350 a month. Okay, a month. He was only coming for one month. And um, the landlord gave him an apartment that usually goes for, in low season, 650 a month, and in high season, 850 a month, sometimes 800. And I was like, oh my gosh. And that's the things that my landlords do. And my landlord did it to someone else before as well, because I forgot the person the person was coming on a specific date and the person arrived and my landlord was the landlord was like don't worry about it Cerise and put the guy up in a $200 a night infinity blue apartment Ugh, I was like well where did I find this landlord so that's what I'm saying like I always have some really good people to work with and stuff of that nature and um, so if you guys have any apartments that you want to rent out you just let me know as I love you all and I want to make sure that you guys are well taken care of um, Jamar W, they sent me a list of requirements which differs from what I was told on the phone. Okay, maybe, can you snapshot the list of requirements for me and what's at me? And then I will send it all out to you guys who are wondering as well. And Jamar, great info. Thank you, sweetie. Isaac, very inform informative live. Aw, oh, thanks. Don't delete it so I can play it back. <laughs> Isaac. You know what? I did a lot of talking on this one about someone else, not about Joel. Joel will be cool with whatever I say because he knows that he knows that I love the kid. Like I, he, in my books, he talks. He did what he did, but I forgive him because it's forgivable. But the other one I talked so much about, and I don't want to talk about him because he's so not in my heart or in my life. But he's only here in my head because of what he's done recently. So I'm thinking, do I really want that on live to air? Do I really want him to listen to it and hate on me and maybe even come after me? You know, so then I get that little paranoid. And, and you're right, I'm not going to delete it. I'm just going to leave it up. And I, I just talked to two, for two hours and 40 minutes for what? <laughs> to delete it? I guess I won't. Okay, Chico Lo, Yonkers in the building. Salut! <laughs> Alex, Alex. Oh, here we go. It's reconnecting. I was in Sosua earlier today, and um, it was fun. I went to go visit. Have a good time. Sosua is my baby. It really, really is. Um, Cabarete is just a place where I lay my head and um, work. I work a lot in Cabarete. I want you guys to all come to Cabarete too because I'm getting my hand. For those of you who have the budget, you would really love it here in Cabarete. And then you can just get to Sosua really quickly. You don't even need a car. Um, but and those of you who have low budgets as well, you don't want luxury, but you just want something like what I have for off the grid type of thing, a nice view to the ocean, then you, you know, you let me know too. But it's humble. I don't have hot water here. And I don't have air conditioning, as you can probably see. Okay. Um, and Jay Saint. James is good people. Jay Saint. Oh, that's your YouTube name, honey. I didn't know that was your new YouTube name. I didn't know that was you. Yes. You see how synchronicity works? Yes. He put you up in, um, in Infinity Blue. You sent me a video and everything because I was like, oh my gosh, I was so apologetic to you. And I was like, I can't believe I forgot. You were the first person I forgot and the last. I'll never do it again. I really keep tabs on everyone now. Hell, I mean, nice infinity blue apartment. You sent me a video and you were happy. So it worked out. And yes, guys, those are the landlords that I love to work with. Not people who are greedy and going to gouge you for electricity and stuff. And plus, I do like to hold your hand when you guys might find a landlord that, you know, um, you guys might 
you guys might want to contact me. I have a lot of you guys that will contact me for things. You're already settled in your new place, and then you'll contact me for like, um, you know, how do you do this or how do you do that or, you know, I will speak to your landlords for you no problem. And the other day, and he booked his his apartment with me, studio apartment overlooking Sosua Bay, beautiful view, everything. He booked that boat two months ago, maybe. Okay, and um, so he booked it, he paid his deposit, everything was great, and then he, they, he came. And when he got here, he said, you know what, Cerise? And he was very honest with me. And he said, you know what, Cerise? I love the place, but I think I might want to be more in Sosua, more on the strip. And I said to him, okay, give me a minute. Sure, you want to leave? And he's like, yeah. I said, okay, give me a minute. I'm going to tell you what your options are in a minute. I contacted the landlords because I also those landlords also have apartments in El Bate. So Los Chiramicos is overlooking this, the Sosua um, Beach, but once you walk through Sosua Beach, you are now in El, El Bate, the center of Sosua. Chiramicos is in Sosua as well, okay? But where everybody usually likes to go for socializing and everything is called El Bate, E L. So that's where he wanted to be. And I contacted the landlord and I said, listen, my client has only been here for one day. He doesn't want this apartment any longer. He wants a different apartment in El Bate. Can you give him the apartment? The apartment, is it available? And they were like, why doesn't he like where he's at? And I told them straight up, he just wants to be around more people that, you know, like more activity. And they were like, no problem. And I said, is, is, is it okay that he carries his deposit to the other place? Like he doesn't have to pay a new deposit and do all this craziness. And all. They said, well, he didn't even pay the first month's rent yet. <laughs> and he, I told him, and I said, as soon as you pay the rent, <laughs> as he only paid the deposit, right? And he's like, Cerise, I have the money here. I just didn't know who I was supposed to pay. I didn't know when I was supposed to pay or anything. So I, we laughed, it was funny. Cause my landlords actually didn't even ask him for the money. Right? They were just letting it flow because uh, they trust me and they know that I'm going to be, you know, they don't want to mess around with the business that we do because we're so close with those landlords. It's a husband and wife team that they are. And I, you know, it was so sweet. It was really funny. So anyway, um, the landlord, I told the landlord, okay, he's going to pay it on Monday when you guys move him to the other place. Now, I couldn't make it on Monday to go pick him up in Sosua like I initially wanted to. I wanted to go pick him up from the apartment and take him to the other one. But I wasn't able to do that because my water had to get fixed here. So I contacted the landlord and, no, the landlord contacted me and said to me, what time is your client moving today? And I said, I have an issue with that right now. And the landlord said, don't worry, I'm gonna drive him to the new apartment. Tell him to, tell him to call me when he's ready and I'm gonna pick him up and drive him to the new apartment. And I was like, what? Holy smoly macaroni. Like that is what I'm talking about, that's respect. And he got there. And he contacted me and he's like, yep, yeah, I'm in, I'm comfortable and I'm good. So that's good. And that's what I love about getting apartments for you guys. Not everything is going to go over well and perfect. You know, not everything is going to be uh, que sera, sera, what was that? that? Do you guys remember movie, that song? <laughs> so anyway, not everything's going to be that easy for everyone. Not everyone's going to throw their hands up in the air and throw caution to the wind. Some people will get very annoyed. But at the end of the day, as long as we're all cool and we work all together, it will be a win-win situation for me. And that's exactly what paradise offers. Peace. Okay, guys, now I do have to go. But let me see if there's at least one last thing here. Gabriel, I am an American. Will it be easy for me to have a green card in the DR without losing my status as an American? Well, absolutely. I'm going to answer this question and I'm going to head out, guys. So um, you can stay here for up to 90 days, um, extend your visa or whatever. Okay, so you can be here for 30 days. Then you can stay by extending your visa if you want to, okay, for another 90 days. If you stay, I mean, for another 60 days. If you stay after your extension, 
Interpol is not going to come and pick you up. Like they're not going to go and pick you up where you're at. Um, if you're just minding your business and you're not getting yourself into any problems with any ladies or any gentlemen, you're not in the bars fighting and drinking, making noise, doing drugs, all that stuff, and you're just minding your business so nobody else will mind it for you, then you can stay here. I know people that have been here for, drum roll, 20 years with no residencia. But, and they own businesses, and they have police officers as friends, and judge, like, fiscalia, like, they have, you know, they're friends with politicians, and everybody knows that they're, they are here without residencia, and one guy hasn't even left the island. This is where he lives. He has property here, he rents it out on Airbnb and everything, and he's never left the island. I think he should get an honorary residencia. But then there's other people that have been here for five years. I met a Canadian a few months ago who, um, like, just when when the virus hit, and they uh, he had to leave. And he's like, can you believe it? I've been here for five years, and I have to go now because of this thing. And he's, like, complaining because he had to go home and take care of his mom just in case because she's old and no one could take care of her. And he was afraid that something may happen. So he had to leave and he's like, I'm leaving my home after five years. And he was really upset and really hurt. And I was like, you were here for five years, well. And he said, uh, yeah. And I was like, did you, did you get your residency? Oh no, this is what he said. He said that he has to pay um, a few hundred dollars at the airport. Like uh, probably a thousand, I would say, after being here for five years. So online, if you go online, okay, and look at the Dominican Republic exit taxes, you will see that they give you a list of time after three, after 30 days, after 60 days, after 90 days, and then I think it's after three months they boost it up to maybe six months or whatever. Like so, after so a year and then a year and a half and then two years, two years and a half. So um, depending on how long you've been here is how much you'll have to pay at the airport when you leave. They're not going to imprison you. That's the law now, and I haven't heard of the new the new president changing anything but it's just common knowledge that a lot of people come they overstay because it is so welcoming here and it's a beautiful paradise and um, if they have the money to stay and they don't have to worry about anybody back where they came from then why not and again they'll just pay that when they leave at the airport so please um, speak to a lawyer if you feel uncomfortable or speak to your embassy before you come but more importantly Go online and do the research on exit taxes and tariffs because there is your answer right there. If the country did not accept that tax thing, then why would they even create it? It's created for a reason. So um, believe me, I know people who have left. Now, who's to say that that won't change in the next year? I don't know. But right now, it is September 2020. And as it goes right now, if you're coming down here and you stay past the 90 days, 30 days or whatever, please do not live with um, fear in your heart and paranoia that you're gonna get found out. You know, a lot of people here don't have their residencia or their residential status. And it's because they know how to move in these streets and stay out of problems and stuff of that nature. Um, okay, there's one more question. As of right now, you can be a dual citizen. Yes, thank you for answering that. A dual citizen, you will never lose your American status. You are an American. Um, I think you're an American, Gabriel, right? If you, if I don't know about America, and I don't know about green cards, because we don't have green cards in Canada, but if you are a permanent resident in Canada or a citizen, in Canada, then, you know, like, I will never lose my Canadian residency. They can never say to me, oh, Sarish, you've been abroad for too long, like, you're no longer a Canadian. They could never do that to me. I still do my taxes, and um, I still, it's, I still love Canada to pieces. I love Canada. I talk about Canada almost every single day, seriously. When I meet people, even today in the bank, he was telling me, if, um, Francisco was telling me the difference between America banking and Canada banking here. And I was like, I'm Canadian. <laughs> when I found out what Canada was, you know, I was so proud of what Canada does. They don't keep track of everything you're doing. But, uh, mm -hmm. 
And you can be an American and a Dominican. Absolutely, you can be a Dominican and a Canadian as well. Once you get your citizenship here, like your residencia, they call it, you will get something called a cedula. But um, you will still be considered somebody who is a foreigner here. So it is what it is. Don't be afraid. I understand that you might want to, you know, get yourself... You don't want to let go of your country. You don't want to ever be in a position of never being able to go back to where you came from, right? And I get that. But, yeah, it's, it's, it is what it is. Do your research on your own as well, just so you feel at peace and at rest. But now that you have a certain foundation that I've given you of information, you can go forward with that information and check out any kind of exit tariffs and exit taxes when you're leaving, okay? Alrighty, guys. I am going to go now. And I love you all. Thank you so much. Huge hugs. Loads of love. Big blesses. Thank you for joining me. And I'm going to put a story time out soon. Alrighty, guys. Take care. Bye-bye.